21 points. I'm going to go sail, and I'm going to go the Magpies to win by three points in this uh, absolute thrill. I don't think that... It's good uh, to see that you've stuck your neck out and gone further than a point this week, Daryl. Uh, just going on the results of the earlier game. This competition's that tight, Boxer. Don't be afraid. The estimates margin of four points yep. uh, was very, very tight. This will be very close as well. So the first quarter for Virtue Homes is not too far away. Starting in the middle of the ground, well, Jonty McGuinness is going to do the ruck work to start with in the middle of the ground. So there's a bit of a story. And the big number one ruckman uh, for sale is Jack Leslie. <laughs> And he's going to go up against uh, the big Ruckman for one thaggy, and that will be uh, Brave. The first one goes to McGuinness. Jack Blair handled out to open space and attacking it quickly for one thaggy, but quickly getting wrapped up there by a Cody Hennis tackle was the midfielder there of Josh Bates. Seven-man defence straight away for sale. Yep, as expected, as predicted in the pregame. McGuinness with a tap down again. Brave's doing the ruck work early for the power. There's a whistle and a free kick's going to be paid here. Looks to be a leg. Hudson Holmes is a spare man for sale, so he's doing the middle, middle work and then pushing straight back. So Shannon Lang gets the free kick for the Magpies. Guess what? He's going to the outer side. And on the right boot, that's going to go out of bounds on the full. Shannon, that's not the best kick I've seen you. And that's out of the ground. That's gone. Yeah, that's gone. That's gone, gone. I think that just dropped into the Mitchell. <laughs> uh, and there's so another that, ball coming out already. So oh, instantly. So ball. Jacob Thomas has gone to Jack Leslie, who's, who did start at full forward at the moment. So it's a, a very interesting matchup straight up. Paul Carter, do you keep stats on earliest use of spare ball? Because <laughs> this is world record at under a minute. That's it. I'll just say, though, too, Lang had the right idea. I think today these elite runners are going to really try and run and carry the ball as far as they can, especially against the breeze. So it'll be one faggy far side of the ground. And Tim Knowles to do the kick in after we've fetched the ball from the river. He's going to come more central, which will give him some chance to score. And as I say that, it comes off the inside of his shin and goes down there in the direction of Lindsay. And the boundary line will win the argument, as we'll expect a lot. And you would think the people on the boundary line, there'd be three boundary umpires far side and maybe one this side, Daryl. Fair call. That distance too, yeah. Scotty. He actually got a good purchase on it. It did carry 50 metres. So don't be afraid. They can kick long into the breeze, but don't fall into the track what... Uh, uh, Terrell did yesterday and kick it too far. So McGuinness gets a positive side. The ball favours him, but they can't get the clearance. One faggy hands on the footy through the big man in Bray. is really good at ground level. He hacks it to 25 metres out directly in front, over the top of McInnes's head. Lang runs onto it for sale, but he's more than happy to see that over the boundary line. Around 12, 15 metres around from the one faggy scoring end. Gee, Sale really pushed the numbers inside their defensive 50 just to really clog it up and don't give uh, one faggy too much space, especially their smaller brigade as well. So boundary throw in, two minutes in. First quarter for Virtue Holmes. And that was a good oh. throw in by the boundary umpire. Got over the back. McGuinness just grabbed it out and then gave it to Will Leslie. He left it behind. Head over the football with Sparks. No free kick coming. So Will, Will Leslie with Cooper McGinn's too. Great match up there as well. So McGuinness puts his hand up for the ruck. So does Bray, who comes into this contest. I'll give it to McGuinness over the back. Running onto this one there was Hayes. Kick around the body. This could be a good uh, opportunity for the power. Comes to ground. And Anderson was there, quickly wrapped up. He's so good at ground level. On that occasion was Jackson Williams, another one of those youngsters up in the forward line. And with 30-odd players in the one forward 50, no one's able to get the ball clear initially. A hack kick forward from Sale gets the ball out in the direction of centre half back. It stacks on the middle as Butcher grabs it and he's putting a little tackle by Thomas McMillan. And we'll have yet another stoppage in the Sale forward 50. Ball's going to live down that end of the ground. And the two big boys go at it again. Neither of them are able to get a hand on it. It's going to be yet another stoppage. We're going to have heaps of these, aren't we? There is going to be thousands of them. So here we go again. It's Bray up against Jonty McGuinness. A little backhand to find some space out there. And it's Lang able to get a handball onto a teammate there in Johnson. Johnson flicks one over the top towards Egg Molesi. Umpires pinged him for dropping the footy. And it'll be a free kick to go the way of Thomas McMillan. Little T-Mac about 60 metres from goal. He can put this to a really dangerous spot. McInnes offers the lead, and that's where the kick goes. It drops in short, and that's why you play in front. And Ryan Sparks takes a chest mark 35, 40 metres out directly in front. On any regular day, you put this one in the book, Paul Carter, but on a day like today, he's only even money to hit the Southern Hemisphere from there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, he's gettable. He's absolutely, it's de definitely gettable. And that's what's happening now with these mids at the moment. They're pushing inside defensive 50, the sales side. So the Wonthaggy opponents are following them in, and Sparks found himself in the perfect spot. So Sparks from 44 to get scoring underway. Lovely little 7 iron kick. He puts it out, lets it hang on the breeze, and the breeze does nothing. Minor score only. And the first score of the game's come at the four-minute mark on the Virtue Home scoreboard. One thing, he won behind at one point.
Interesting kicking with the breeze. We've seen a couple of times they have gone a little bit straightish. It is sort of favouring that end of the ground, so not really across the ground as much. Tough conditions. Hudson Holmes will bring it in. We'll kick to the outer side, as you'd expect. Wind gets oh. hold of this one. Nearly comes back to him, and that's how strong it is out there, favouring that end. Lang with the head over the footy. Somehow, ball bubbles out. Handball's backwards from McLaren. Little kick along the ground from McGuinness. Jack Johnson will get onto the end of this one. You kick an outside banana, and that's not what you want to do either. So Lang and Johnson have put some out-of-bounds on the full early for the Magpies. Poor card. I don't have number six on my list for one thaggy. So there's a number six out there for one. So it'll be Schultz of one thaggy to take the free kick on centre wing, and he kicks it to true centre half forward. The big boys fly, and the little oh. man marks it. Little Jared Blair goes up and takes a strong grab, 53 from home. He reels, comes out in the McMillan direction, gets over the back of that contest. Loose ball to be 125 out directly in front of goal. And it's picked up there by Jackson Williams. He goes up and down the kick. Handball to Bates. Bates oh. flying shot on goal. Oof. And it goes far side for only a minor score. Two behinds, two points on the virtual home scoreboard. One thirty leading by that. This is the hardest kick today. The, the, the player at full back. So obviously Hudson Holmes has got the job for sale. But trying to get it out of this area is the hardest job to do right now. He might have to do it to this top side uh, against the breeze. Sure, Boxer might be seeing some numbers out there that aren't really out there. So anyway, there's no number six for one thingy on their list. <laughs> Hudson Holmes kick straight down the middle of the ground. Chug might fly at this one. Can't complete the mark. Ground level McLaren. The forward handball out towards Leslie. Coming off the wing there on that occasion was Schultz. Somehow soccer's out the back and lands in the hands there of O'Connor. He's on the win for the power. Drives it towards half forward. Gets over the top of the leading target in Thomas. Holmes comes out to meet it strong for the Magpies. Taps it in front of once. Johnson will come to help. Bray says, get out of me way. I'll bump you and the ball. Over for a boundary throw in. Six minutes in. The margin sits at two points. One thaggy kicking with the breeze. They lead by two at the moment. It's on the Virtue Home scoreboard. The new Marshall 28. Perfect for families and couples. And Bray goes up against McGinnis again. And John D gets his hands on the foot. He puts it down there. In the direction of number six, I think yes. it might have been. Well done, Boxer. Good spot early. I'll work out who that is. Right, I will really will accept an apology. An apology. You, won't, you won't get one. Ball <laughs> goes up, ball goes down, 70 metres out from the one faggy goal. Stacks on the mill, and the umpire will stalk before he's blowing the whistle, and we'll ball this one up. We'll ball it up 55, 60 around from the one faggy goal, and if he throws it high enough, it might actually blow through for a score. We might actually have an umpire score today. McGuinness takes it out of the ruck. Unable to get foot to ball, though, and we'll have yet another stoppage about three metres closer to goal this time, so about 52, 53 metres out from the one faggy goal scud. Rightio, top of the 50 they go. McGuinness again in the front spot. We'll talk about this ruck duties in a moment. Lang was there, little chip kick, didn't go too far. Blair, that's Jack Variety, comes back onto the right foot. Beautiful kick with the condition, gets over the back, and Williams grabbed it, instantly tackled by Holmes. And we'll have another stoppage. Just uh, are we concerned or not concerned, but uh, surprised that Leslie's not doing the ruck duties. I know McGuinness had, um, had a good game last week. And as you, right on cue, he gets the ball down to Butcher. Butcher's kick doesn't go anywhere, but they're able to get the handball out there to Cody Hennis, and they find a little bit of space far side, free but kick. turn it over. And the umpire's found a free kick going the way of Jack Blair for a high contact. He's 52 metres out, probably just on the wrong side to really be a chance, but he'll go right goalpost and see if he can work this one back. He takes advantage of the new rule, runs around and kicks it off the middle of his shin and it dribbles into the forward 50. Chaos ball down there, no one able to win it cleanly at ground level. Initially picked up and snapped around the corner by... Boy, missed that one there. Williams, I think it might have been, Scott, and it's gone through for yet another minor score. Three behind three points, and we played eight minutes of the first quarter. That's on the virtual home scoreboard. I actually think Jack Leslie might be carrying an injury, perhaps, yep. uh, into this game, and uh, they just uh, wrapped him in cotton wool it was against a, the breeze. was a rumour circulating earlier in the week that he might not be 100%. That kick from Holmes, looking for Johnson. Couldn't complete the mark. And Johnson says, well done. That was the kick we wanted. So clear message is now for the Magpies to kick in that direction. They want the boundary throw in some 70 metres away. For obvious reasons, it's hard for the power to score from there. McGuinness in the front spot, taps it down and does some roving work as well. He's probably nearly been the most improved player in the competition, I'd say, in season 2024. He's had a fantastic year. He's got himself the free kick here for the Magpies. That kick goes to the point of the square and the wind takes it across close to the boundary line. Forward handball is okay there by Sparks. They go backwards to power. O'Connor's back there. Little grubby little kick along the ground. Bates will stand. Handball over the top to the runner McMillan. Now to Sparks. Ducks the shoulder. Gets around Lang. Forward handball was good to Blair. And Blair, Jared, kicks to open space going back with a flight nicely done. 
was a Ben Hallmark. And he's going to handle across now to Hudson Holmes. So Holmes now with the kick 40 metres out, but he offers up a handball instead. So they've got the ball outside 50 in the hands of Friedman. His kick goes up and down, gets out there to centre wing, where Mark's taken by the Ruckman. John T. McGinnis has been everywhere early doors. His kick comes up towards centre half forward. Four versus two, favouring one thaggy. And it's Fergus O'Connor again getting his hands on the footy. Runs it over the boundary line, though, and will have a ball in just on the forward half. This is what happens when you get players sucked up the ground and you leave Jack Leslie one-on-one. When the ball hits the ground, he's a non-comp, uh, non-playing at the moment because he can't bend down that far. What about the uh, interchange boxer? They can't get on. The play's on the other side of the ground. No player wants to come off, so we've travelled 10 minutes and neither side has made a rotation. Very tough to get on the ground. Absolutely. When it's on that far side, it's uh, very, very difficult as well. This is when they, they are yelling, but it's coming back to them. So, <laughs> so. One, thing, one thing you win that clearance and get it to the half-forward line, far side of the ground where the ball's been situated all day. Bray does get his hands on this one first, and a little rugby pass out there, and the umpire did spot the throw, and the free kick will go the way of Bates on the half-back flank. Uh, Lang, sorry, on the half-back flank. So he goes back now and puts his leg into it as far as he can. It goes 40 and then blows back 10 for a net of 30. Ball sits on the wing. No one able to take it cleanly initially, but now it's picked up at ground level by McLaren. He rolls onto his left leg. They hack the ball up towards half forward. Ball sits on its point. O'Connor gets his hands on it again, but he's wrapped up in a big tackle. Tackle laid there by Leslie, and the ball will be tossed forward half flank for sale far side of the ground. Margin sits at three. Virtue home scoreboard into this first quarter. Jack Blair comes off and Sale says, OK, we'll match that and I'll uh, have a rotation as well. Ball up, no one really wins it. The umpire's going to cross his arms and do it again. So the first interchange occurs for both sides. And Thomas Glenn just comes off the ground with Jack Blair. So is Glenn running with Blair? Very good call, Scotty. Ball on the half-forward flank, no one able to win it. And it goes back towards centre wing. And there'll be a ball in again, centre wing far side of the ground. We're 11 and a half played. No one's yet to trouble the left-hand scoring column. It's one thaggy three behind. Sale yet to score. One thaggy certainly kicking to the scoring end. The two Ruckman go at it again, and this time it gets right over the back of both. Blair wins it at ground level, and he hacks a kick up towards half forward. 2v1, ball hits the deck, not able to complete the mark there was Lindsay. Handball pops over the top there in the direction of Sparks. They hack the ball into the forward 50 now. Two one-on-ones in front of the ball. Best opportunity they've had all day. They're going to pay it. And the mark's been paid. And it'll go to Jackson Williams, who'll go back from about 20 out. And you watch the charge of the light brigade <laughs> to the bench here, boys. Look at them all come. They want seven of them off at once. <laughs> I tell you what, they're, they're actually going to be blown by the time they get to the bench because they're running against the breeze to get this uh, rotation happening at the moment. But Jared Blair's been in everything this afternoon already. And uh, he got this goal assist if they get it. So Williams comes in from 30. Distance won't be a problem. Goal umpire does some work, but gets back into between the two big sticks and says, that's our first major of the day. Goal to Jackson Williams and one thaggy. And it's interesting to see that when the ball comes inside 50 for one thaggy, it's, the, it's, it's over the back nine times out of ten. So you've got to be that second forward and be on your, on your mark, really, and make sure that you're in front. Uh, like Williams then too, it was a great contested mark, but I love the way he kicked it at goal then too. He kicked it with authority and uh, he got the first for one thaggy. At 13 minutes played of the first quarter and one thaggy do have that nine point lead. One goal, three, nine. Sale yet to go inside their forward 50. All right, ball comes back to the middle and you're exactly right with that. Uh, you can certainly get the longer penetration with the kicks with the breeze. So now Bray does the tap. He taps it down. Out the back there. Nicely done was Hayes. Trying to get a handball to Bates. Good. Oh. Solid hit from Freeman. Somehow got the ball, though. And he drives it in. Patterson gets over the back. And running onto this one is... I tell you what, it's a goal, though. Anderson, well read. And quickly got ball to boot. In a blink of an eye, one thaggy. You've got two all-important goals. And this is the importance of just going straight down the, down the middle of the ground. That ball's going to carry, and like we spoke about. And the, there's, it's that little small fleet brigade that have got to be the... Uh, key catalyst this afternoon and Noah Anderson perfect spot uh, for that ball to hit the ground and uh, a good little finish 2-3-15 and still in the 13 minute mark so those both goals, those goals were scored in the 13th minute of the game uh, by on the Virtue Home scoreboard the Ruckman go at it again back in the middle, Bray up against McGuinness the umpire tosses it in the air and it's McGuinness getting over the top again, he gets a backhander to it out towards there where it's picked up by Sparks. No, it's not by Sparks, it's by Lang. He kicks the ball into the forward 50, and Lux of Fortune 
drops right into the chest of Brad Descent. Oh, and you can have this kick yourself. <laughs> I couldn't hit a golf ball far enough to score from here. He's 35 out on a 45 degree angle, kicking directly into the teeth of the breeze. And no chance he, of getting he'll, it. Yeah. He'll Sorry, drop 10 metres out. Yeah, I was going to say, it'll hit the top of the square as well. Just a quick number change as well. Tate, he's not wearing 66 today. He's wearing number 8. Thank you. So, and he's not wearing a long sleeve either. So uh, there you go. There's one for you guys as well. I'm on fire today. So it'll be Descent from 35, may as well be 85 with this breeze he's kicking into. The only advantage he's got is both goal posts are leaning towards him in the breeze. <laughs> the kick has <laughs> dropped 25 short. Oh, there you go. But we'll call it a pass because it's landed in the hands of Jared Friedman who's come out like the kick was intended for him. And he'll go back and have a shot from 25 and still may not get the distance box. He may not either. At the same time, he this, did meet that with pace, didn't he? This is the only spot I reckon you can kick a goal yep. from. This is perfect. He, he won't miss from here. I think he will. Now the curse has been put on him. Freeman comes in. Left-hand goalpost will be the target. That's where he puts it. And that's where it stays. <laughs> Unbelievable. You would have thought for sure that would swing back. Minor score only. I think that was on the swing too. I think that goalpost went to the right as the ball went to the left. First score for sale. One behind one point on the Vertram score. We're trailing by 14 points. 2 3 15, one thing. All right. Ball gets out to the uh, wing area after that. Kinder. They've come to the near side. Freeman gave a quick handball across to a teammate. And that teammate was Hall. Now they get it forward. Hennis. Got it to the top of the 50. O'Connor started well across half back for the power. Comes around and chip kick. He had three teammates, but he picked out the one opponent. And that was Freeman. Margin sits at 14. Magpies are trailing at the moment. Freeman's on the wing area. And he is a backman too, by the way. He got had that last shot. Kick holds up in the breeze and Chug read it perfectly. Takes the mark at half back. He looks up, does Chuck's are gonna get Chug go the other side of the ground, and that's gonna hit Williams on the chest. This is a harder kick, though. That's an open area. It comes back in on the 45. Oh. Schultz diving. Couldn't complete the mark. Lang comes in. Gathers it. Hambles to himself. Has to wait for Campbell to come and help. He picks it up off the deck. Kicks it to open space. On the outer side is Campbell. Ball goes backwards. Tiziani wins it. Tries to keep his feet. Campbell put him down in a tackle. Ducking the arm. And the head there was Blair. Kicked around the body. They've got some numbers of power. And they drive it inside. This time through Bates. It's going to clear the defender in Geordie Desson. And fine touch and go over for a boundary throw in. 16 and a half minutes gone, first quarter in the Virtue Home scoreboard. Sees a 14 point margin in favour of the power. Geez, we're going to have some tired bodies tonight, aren't we? They're playing at a hell bit <laughs> pace at the moment, too, and they've got to play in the difficult conditions, too, so they've got a double whammy at the moment. And it'll be McInnes to do the ruck up against Cooper McInnes. Bray couldn't get down there, no one able to get it clear, so Jonty goes back in and picks it up, and he's dead set kicked it backwards. And it's gone right across the ground and out of bounds. And well done by the bloke in the car there to protect the windscreens. Did you notice that one there, Box? <laughs> I did notice my wife moved the car too, just quietly. She must have been listening. So we'll toss this one in about 50 metres around from the Wonthaggy goal. Far side of the ground. The side you want to be on if you're going to score. Bray gets down there for this one and gets a tap down. Puts it out there in front of Sparks, but no one's able to pick it up before the boundary line wins the argument. I'm not sure your wife has moved the car, Boxer, because I saw her just uh, walking around to the canteen, so maybe someone's knocked off your car. Wh whose hand was she holding? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's Father's Day, so it's true. Let's spread the love. Boundary yeah. throw in, and this time Bray taps it down, and he's got it in the hands of our man, number six, who is still trying to work out who it is. I could have a guess, but I don't want to. And if anyone does know who number six is in the one thaggy jumper. He's not on our team sheet. We need to find out. As Meanwhile, Mitch Douse grabs it, kicks around the body. Although it's a free kick, it's going to come back Sales way. It's pushed off the ball, Scott, as he kicked. Shannon Lang will be the free kick there. So Lang looked to switch. There was no one even interested in the switch and uh, understandably why. Um, as Lang now kicks it to the outer side, the breeze goes high and wide. Contest will form and no one will be able to get it just off the deck at the moment as Egg Melissi Smith works hard. The umpire says, my ball, and we'll ball it up. So we'll ball this one up about 65 around from the one faggy goal. Sale defending resolutely far side of the ground. They'll be happy to go in 14 points down if they can hold this margin. And there's going to be a repeat stoppage, which is hardly a surprise with the amount of humans around this footy. And even if Sale win it and kick it forward, one faggy is set up beautifully behind. So McInnes gets a tap down. He looks for, but can't quite find Douse. And this will be the tertiary ball up in the same area. Not sure what the word for four is, so we'll run with three and hopefully they can clear it here. <laughs> and a backhander from McKinnis sees it go over the boundary line, so we'll have a ball in. 53 metres out, Paul. Quaternary, I believe. Quaternary. Oh, Beautiful. Jeepers. Put Thank that you. in your trivia. I can't, I can't. Good afternoon, Mr Carter. <laughs> the school teacher coming <laughs> yeah. to the fore. 
We let you know, thanks very much to our timekeeper next door in the commentary box here, Andrew McNeil, wearing the number six for the power. Head over the footy there was Lang, gave it to Igmelesi Smith. Good, strong hips. Gives a forward handball out there. And now it gets the hands of Glenn. He handles further out wide to Lang, who kicks it to the wing. Gilmore came strong. Here's a chance for Sale. Bodie Walker, open forward line, kicks it in front and just says, go and get it. And he does just that, although Butcher took a bounce and then lost the footy. And well done by Thomas McMillan. The composure of the young 16-year-old was beautiful. Won the footy back and got it out on the outer side to Tiziani. Inboard kick. Now to Patterson. Are you saying he butchered it? He did. Oh. So Kai Patterson there on the halfback flank. Docks around the man on the mark and then puts a little chip kick in out to the far side wing. Mark taken out there by Williams. Potentially centre wing. He comes in board to open things up. Puts a little bit too much oxygen on it. Egmelesi Smith from Sale can bring it to ground and create a contest. Weighted numbers will win out here, though. Jake Thomas picks it up and pops a little handball into space. And now they're off to the races through Jack Blair. He gets the ball into the forward 50. It's four on two down here. Cooper McInnes good at ground level. And he'll do well to hold this in. And better than that, he picks up his opponent, Hudson Holmes, like a wrestler and put him in a bit of a suplex move there, boss. It was actually a great move, but I don't think Hudson Holmes weighs that much. So the two Ruckman go out, Bray wins it down, they can't get a clearance, so the handball flicked forward, and we'll have that secondary stoppage again as Ryan Sparks is wrapped up in a tackle. Gee, Jack Blair's kicking inside 50, he's uh, probably in his biggest letdown this afternoon. McInnes with the backhander again, can't find space, well you can't find space where there isn't any, and a little hack kick forward off the ground there by Will Leslie to try and get the ball outside the defensive 50, gets it to about 40 out from goal. And both umpires converge to toss it into the air. And they'll do well to rotate that responsibility today. It's going to be a lot of balling up. So again, McGuinness takes the ruck, taps it, clears the area. And McNeil was the one who grabbed that footy. Just goes to show how much the wind actually is affecting the kicking style of players too. It's just grabbing it in a bit of air and just <laughs> throwing it to the side. Out the back again was McNeil. And he got wrapped up again. We're going to have another stoppage. McGuinness still continuing to do the ruck duties for the Magpies. Likewise... This time with Bray, it goes one thaggy's way, and McGuinness goes back and tries to win the footy and gets a strong tackle again. We'll have another stop with a free kick. He's going to go against Patterson on that occasion, and the big ruckman, John De McGuinness, says, I'll take the free kick. He's lost the hairband too, Scott. This could be all sorts of problems. He gives a handball. He doesn't want to have the kick with it. Hudson Holmes go to the outer side. Can he keep it in? No, he can't. Out of bounds on the full. Do you play a little bit of risk football and try and, and attack on this side if you sail? So just to get it away from that when, dead zone? When do you come across, Boxer? That's the key. When do you come? When do you bring it to the near side? So Tiziani goes inside forward 50. Big pack. McGuinness had a couple of bites, has it? No mark, said the umpire. I'll let you answer that question if you like, Box. We've got a stoppage. It, it was a, that perfect situation then, too. If sail push the numbers across, it is a risk. That I think the reward's bigger if they can get numbers across. All right. Tap down for the Magpies inside their defensive 50. Home slipped over. We'll have another stop. So, so you're happy to play the dead footy that side? Just for now, I'm saying if you're going to defend against the win, play that negative side? Or you want to get, you want to try and win some yardage and play an attacking style of footy? I, well, I predicted you're not going to get a score into the breeze. So as McGuinness ran out of real estate trying to keep it in the field of play, boundary throw in. 22 minutes in, the margin 14. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure you're going to kick a goal up there. So I think it's all about defending, defending it. against the yep. breeze and not taking that risk. But anyone? That's the difference of coaches. So this is world record territory for the boundary umpire to come in. He's come in 25 metres, and then the wind hasn't affected. It's landed in the hands of Cooper McInnes. He spins around, gets a good look at the ground. No one's able to take the ball cleanly. Quick kick forward. Mark taken? Not 15. But the umpire's blown the whistle and said, give it to me. And McInnes is deprived of a mark 30 metres out directly in front because the ball only travelled 7 or 8 metres. And the Ruckman go at it again. This time, Sale are able to get it out the back into a little bit of space for Freeman. He pops a handball over, but they've turned it over here in a crucial spot. Ball now in the hands of Sparks. He tries to burst through one, gets a handball to McInnes. He throws it on the right leg. He's kicked smothered. That's got to be a sling tackle Jesus. for sure. Physical. Yep. And sling tackle it is. Paid again. And McInnes also the victim of that one as well. So you wonder whether they've said, let's rough the big Ruckman up because he's going so well. And he dishes off the handball there to Holmes. And Holmes goes thump in the Johnson direction. Big pack flies. No one able to take the mark. Ball hits the ground there. Picked up by Thomas Campbell, flicks a handball forward. Bodie Walker in the area, but can't get his hands on the footy. And one thing, he'll reset through numbers. Ball goes from Sparks there to Patterson. They come through the middle of the ground via Williams. Ball gets into the forward 50 where there's a nest of magpies. 
And the boundary line will win the conversation yet again as we tick over the 24-minute mark for what has to be the 29th forward 50 stoppage for one thaggy. So here you're going with that one there, too. A nest of magpies. So not bad. Not bad. Cheers, mate. Considering it's swooping season coming up. Paul Carter, inside 50s. 11 to 2 to two at the moment. One thaggy's way. Johnny Beginners, 19 hit-outs and uh, 6 disposals. Certainly having a uh, big impact. That's all thanks to Gippsland Suzuki, the revolutionary Suzuki Swift Hybrid. Ball up. Can they... Get something out of this one, the power. McGuinness is there. Sparks just wants to rip it out of his hands. Hudson Holmes stops them both. The other status of clearance is going 11-6 sales way. Top of the square, ball up. 24 and three-quarter minutes into the first quarter. McGuinness taps it backwards in a dangerous spot. And dropping to ground there was McNeil. We'll have another ball up. I think uh, Boxer, that might have answered your question before. Sale had three numbers on this near side. The switch could have been on if they wanted to go there. And they decided not to. And so. I, just, I noticed with the set play, with Holmes kicking to that far side, they've always gone to Johnson. Yep. So th he's the man they're going to kick to every time they come out. So ball up, point of the square. Good tap down. Can they get it off the ground here? The power, it's in the skull square. Magpie's defenders are defending strong and hard. And they wrap it up. And Glenn was one down there. He sat on the ball for a moment. He had some extra company. This is in a spot you don't want to hit it over as a ruckman. The ball gets thrown up. Grabbed out of the ruck there by Bray. Probably a smart move in the end. Let Bray grab it and then instantly tackle. Another stoppage. One more, Scotty, then over to you. Bray taps it down. Egmelissi Smith with quick ball movement to boot. Gets it out. It's going to come back straight in because Chug has it. So Chug, 55 from goal. Plenty of numbers in front of him. He's got options to square the ball up if he wants to. This well, is, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he's actually going back to have a shot here. <laughs> That's gets, the one you square up, I reckon. He gets on the left leg and puts the top of the square 15 out. The oh, big boys oh. fly. McInnes has a fair piece of it but can't complete the grab. Ball comes to ground level. Hacked off the ground there by Tiziani. Ball goes out boundary side. Now it's picked up by Lang and he finds a teammate in Thomas Glenn who marks just inside. Uh, Kai McDonald, excuse me, just inside defensive 50. So McDonald now just steadies things down a little bit and Johnston's about 50 metres down the line. So... He's joined by Bodie Walker. Big Bodie goes up with one mitt, can't complete the mark. Ball gets out the back of the contest to Johnson. He pops a handball off into space there to Douse. Douse comes right through the middle of the ground now, and it's in the hands of Glenn. Glenn pops a kick over the top, but it's cut off, and it'll be Jai Gilmore on the halfback flank just to settle things down here for the power. Can I just say quickly, Jared Blair's been waiting for eight minutes to come on the ground. Yeah, eight minutes. So can Gilmore switch this one? No, he goes to the far side. He had the numbers too. I would have liked that switch. It gets to the outer side. A little chip kick over the top there was from Dickerson. Lands in the hands of Chug. And Chug now has it. Goes backwards towards Dickerson, who drops the mark. But second effort is OK. Fumble the footy, though. Coming the other way was Hennis. Nicely done there by Jack Blair. Little sidestep was good. Right foot kick. Inside forward 50. At the back. Oh, great courage. Hudson Holmes read that better than anyone else. Put the body on the line. Took the contested mark. And we'll clear to the outer side. Guess who? Jack Johnson was the target. And he's given away the free kick. You're onto something, Box. There's the, uh, the, the, the non-midfield backman that we spoke about with Holmes. How good is he down back? And he can read the play so well because he's played most of his footy down back. So, you know, he wants to be a midfielder, but he's doing a great job for his side at the moment. And he might even be that midfielder that plays that loose man down yeah. back. Perfect spot for him. Dickerson's kick goes in the direction of Bray. Got over the back. McGuinness was there. Ran down. Sorry, Jonty McGuinness, that was ran down by Cooper McGuinness. And the free kick's going to be paid, is it? And McGuinness is hurt too. So this will be interesting to see. He's going to get up, is Jonty. Ooh, he's got more. <laughs> he's got no hope from here. No, Cooper McGuinness has the footy. Point of the 50, kicking into the teeth of the breeze. He kicks it high and up. It comes back and out of bounds on the full. Although Blair just got a fingertip onto it, that one. Well done by one of the smallest players on the field in Jared Blair to touch that and get a boundary throw in. Can they get something from the stoppage? They lead by 14 points at the 28 and a half minute mark of the first quarter for Virtue Holmes. So uh, McInnes has grabbed himself up off the deck. The throwing goes nowhere near either of them. Lands in the hands of the power player, but the umpire says you can't do that. <laughs> and it's going to be a free kick against Patterson who took the ball out of the ruck, even though the ball was thrown straight to him because he wasn't the nominated ruckman. So this will be another kick for John T. McGuinness, and I think he'll do well here to just suck in some oxygen while the ball's fetched from down behind the goals there because he's been driven into the ground three or four times and he's rucked unchanged this entire first quarter. Mm. 
So McInnes now looks to give the handball off, but it's clever play there by Jack Blair, who pushes in and stands next to Holmes and says, you're not going to dish this one off, you can kick it yourself. And he does, and he only gets 25 metres or so on it. The ball lands in a dangerous spot. Cracking in there is Patterson from one thaggy. He flicks a handball out the back, but they've turned it over. And now Hutchins for sales got it, and they go boundary side. And the ball trickles over the boundary line for a throw in about 70 around from the power goal. So every sale player pushes defensive when the ball's inside 50, in their defensive 50. So it leaves three or four one thaggy players out to pick and choose what they want to do. Boundary throwing goes right angles, favours one thaggy's goal, but Egmelesi Smith reads it. Twisting and turning, comes back onto his favourite left foot. Pierces a kick, goes over the top of Tainch's head. And it will have a boundary throw in out of side. It's the 40th boundary throw in in the first quarter. That could be the greatest ugly kick you've ever seen. He kicked the left foot barrel underneath the breeze, underneath the stream zone. Is that what it's called, boss? Streamline. <laughs> Streamline, my mistake, sorry. It could be the Zambrero uh, boundary throw in of the day after. We're not having too <laughs> many goals this afternoon. And after that boundary throw in, we'll have a stoppage. The two Ruckman not only doing work in the air, they're doing work on the ground as well. McGuinness with another tap down and then got Shepard out. So he's, he's having some sort of game, is John T. McGuinness. For Gippsland Suzuki, he's got the free kick at half back at the moment for the Magpies. He's side trailed by 14 points, though. Into the breeze, so we'll have a good indication after the second quarter how this game is sort of panning out. McGuinness's kick goes to the wing. Sparks caused the contest, got it down at ground level there. And Patterson, handballs goes backwards to Thomas. He shrugs a tackle. The forward handball was to no one except the boundary line, and that's what he found. And we have a boundary thrown on the outer side. Scotty is with us for Gippsland. Izuzu this afternoon, you are listening to Gippsland Live on TRFM, right across Gippsland in the Valley. If you want to stream us as well, you can do on the new listener app. So we'll toss this one in centre wing, and the ball just about ends up at centre half forward. Egmelesi Smith gets onto it, tries to break the bray tackle, does dishes a handball off to McGuinness, the give and go back to Egmelesi Smith, and his kick finds Bodie Walker. <laughs> and they're laughing because the kick was not intended to go there. It was meant to go 30 metres past him, but the breeze blew it back to big bad Bodie. And Big Bad Bodie will be accustomed to the 50-year storm if you're a Point Break fan. And the siren sounds as Sale's taken a mark. And the most optimistic kick after the siren ever. He's marked at 70 from goal, kicking into a 90-kilometre-an-hour breeze, and he went back as if he was going to have a shot. He did have a look, didn't he? He had a look, he had a look and then went, oh, no, it's uh, blowing a gale at Bairnsdale. So one thing he lead, it's probably where we expected after the first quarter, they kicking with the breeze. It's 2-3-15, one thingy, leading Sale, one behind. A 14-point margin to the power. It is Gippsland Live on TRFN. Don't forget, you've got the hot gift ideas for Dad. If you've forgotten about him, you've got still a chance to go into your local store. It is Harvey Norman, Electrical Gippsland.
Uh, we've got a feeling it's going to be tight and close, and the wind won't stop. That's 14 point margin. One thaggy kicking with the breeze in the first quarter. 2 3 15, leading the Magpies one behind. They had two scoring shots in the first quarter. Will that be the difference? They had their moments, did the Magpies, but one thaggy lead it by 14 points. Here's Paul Carter with the key stats thanks to Gippsland Suzuki, the new revolutionary Suzuki Swift hybrid. It's available at Gippsland Suzuki. Well, one thank you on the inside 50 is not surprisingly 15 to 2 that quarter. The clearances, however, went sales way. Uh, 15 6, mostly due to Jaunty McGinnis' domination. Center sale 2 to 1. Free kick sale 8 7. Not many marks taken. 13 to 9, one thank you's way. Uh, as I said, one, uh, Johnny McGuinness, 21 hit-outs in the first quarter. Shannon Bray, 10. A bit of an indication of the number of stoppages that we had. Individually, Ryan Sparks, 8 disposals. 7 to Jack Blair. 3 each to Josh Bates, Jared Blair and Isaac Chug. And for sale, 10 to Shannon Lang. 8 to Hudson Holmes, as well as Johnny McGuinness. A big quarter, 21 hit-outs and 8 disposals for Johnny McGuinness. And along with 3 clearances. 5 disposals to Derek Eggs, Melissa Smith and Jack Johnson. 3 to Jack McLaren. Thank you very much, Paul. Got some uh, around-the-ground scores for us have your boxer it's all thanks to harvey norman furniture and don't forget massive 10-day clearance sale is on now last days lounges dining room furniture outdoor furniture and if my kids are listening wouldn't mind a new barbecue that would be nice on father's yeah, day nice. very nice too then uh, thanks for their ongoing support there too harvey norman gippsland fantastic uh mid gippsland it is the first semi-final they're played at yanar foster one two eight to newborough one three nine in the North Gippsland Football League, Woodside, just the one point to Hayfield, 1-2-8. So obviously conditions are playing havoc all across Gippsland at the moment as well. In the Allenbank League, Nearham South, 3 2 20, to Longwari, 2 5 17. A little bit of rain down in the valley too, I can let you know. There that, you go. Uh, it is raining down there with the breeze. So uh, that's all you want. That's, that's all you need. Nana Goon in the West Gippsland Football League, 3 2 20, they trail Inverloch Comwack, 5 2 32, Scudman. All right, how do you see this one uh, panning out, Scotty? What have they done to start this second quarter? Anything different from the power? Can't see, can't see too big of a structural change in the middle. It looks like the big four up against the big four, and it'll be McGuinness up against Bray. McGuinness, wash, rinse, repeat, wins the tap down. No one able to get their hands on the footy initially, though. Bates now picks it up and flicks a handball out into a little bit of space, but that's shut down very rapidly. Yeah, no, there's uh, Isaac Chug, we spoke about a pre-game, is the loose man for one thaggy this quarter. So McGuinness wins it out, goes backwards this time, but they've turned it over in the middle of the ground and it's hacked forward there by our man number six, McNeil. The mark's taken across half-back by Jordan Descent. He comes out the attacking side box. You've got your wish, but they can't find a teammate in space. And one thing will do well to split this contest here. And they do. And we'll get a ball up. Interesting that Sale don't want to go man on man. They've left Jared Freeman as the loose down in their back line as well. So prepared to go head-to-head -head with their loose... Uh, in defence. And very interesting too, they want to come to the near side straight away to the Magpies. Big tap by Bray, uh, Bray. quick kick by Hutchins though. Got it to the wing area, Egg Molesi smith beautiful one-hand pickup. Got a handball out to Lang, it was at his toes, and quickly closed in by McNeil. I, I think I'm going to see an attacking style of play from Sale this quarter. Play this top side here, two of the biggest forwards in the competition. They've got Jack Leslie and Brad Desson to kick to, and if you want to throw in Jack Johnson as well uh, as the icing on top, They've got the calibre, they've just got to get the ball in there. Bray with a big fist down, trying to gain some metreage, and Sparks will see it go over. What's uh, Isaac Chug thinking at the moment? He's a loose man in defence, and he he's standing in front of Dixon <laughs> and Leslie. I think he's going to be a step later. That's what I think he's going to be. Yeah, I'd be keeping an eye on those two. I wouldn't be watching the footy. Ball comes back in, one and a half minutes into the second quarter. Ground level Lang, got tackled when he didn't have the footy. Sparks handball over the top was beautiful to Bates. Got it back to Sparks. And the outside right foot kick. Yeah, it's going for the boundary every day of the week. And if that's not deliberate, it is. No, it's not. The umpire's called throw in this side. Deliberate it's... down the bottom. Sorry, uh, non official. And I couldn't see it just on the. Okay, well, he's changed his mind and decided we'd have a boundary. Yeah, throw -in. I saw the umpire here. He's called in the throw in. Well, old Krusty the Clan down the bottom there decided to call deliberate and then uh, throw it in. <laughs> uh, they do throw it in. Bray grabs it out of the ruck. McGuinness grabs him. And I'll tell you what's interesting here. The Ruckman have changed sides that they're starting from. Just because they've swapped ends, now Bray's on the side favouring the win. So we'll be interested to see whether or not his taps increase. And he wins that one there in the forward 50. Ball now pops out in the hands of Hudson Holmes. His quick kick around the corner finds grass rather than a teammate. They converge from all angles. No one able to take the ball cleanly. Perhaps taken a little bit high there was O'Connor. And the umpire agrees. And our man Fergus will get up and take the kick. About four kicks from home, which is about 80 metres today. He gets, and he goes wide, and Mark taken down low there by Sparks. 
and Sparks will get the ball about 75 from goal, hard up against the boundary line. He comes in board, laces out a little pass down there, gets oh. over the back. Oh. McKinnis can't get free the mark, kick. and the umpire's found a free kick that'll go the way of Aiden Lindsay. And this might no, be some sort of chance. chance. No this is chance. a chance. There's no chance from here, Box. None whatsoever. I'm going to give him a chance. He has to pull it to that point post. Left the far one. Left-hand point post and let the rest do the wind do the rest. So it will end up on the far right-hand point post if he does that. So he's 40 out. He's confident. He's having a shot. He goes left-hand goal post, Box. And the ball swings and swings and swings and swings, <laughs> and swings for a minor score only. Told you, no chance. <laughs> Never looked like it. was close. They were clapping by in front of the goals end too. They thought it was through. One thirty, two four, sixteen, get the first score of the second quarter, leading by fifteen points on the Club Eastwood Bench. And I tell you, if he kicked that goal, that would have been the Zambrero goal of the decade. <laughs> just quietly. But he didn't. So Hudson Holmes will bring it in. He could get this ball past the centre of the ground if he goes straight down the middle, but he doesn't. He plays on and comes out the broadcast side, then goes thump. Bodie Walker settles behind it, but he's too far back. Mark taken by Jacob Thomas. Never trust anyone with two first names. <laughs> and he takes the mark and kicks into the forward 50 into the teeth of the breeze. Johnny McGuinness goes back, can't complete the mark. Ball gets out the back towards Blair. Goes past him to Sparks. Sparks charges in. Pops a little handball over the top there to Lindsay. Lindsay oh. goes a little snapper around the corner, but he goes across the face of goal and will ball this one in 15 metres out that from the one faggy goal. Smart kick by Lindsay too. He wanted to do the dribble kick. Obviously didn't work in his favour, but... That's the way to go if you're going to have a go at goals that far out on that sort of angle. Margin sits at 15 points. Second quarter for Club Eastwood. Become a member today. They're giving away a car if you become a member as well. Join that one up and quickly taking this from the stoppage was Glenn. Barreled one out to the middle of the ground. It's going to scoot over the back. And Bodie Walker's oh. there. A couple little nice side steps. Just missed the handle to Egan Leslie Smith, though. Hennis comes in. Good, don't argue. Gives it to Jack Johnson. Back, back to Hennis. He missed him, though. Now the big fella has to get down at ground level and try and pick it up off the deck. That was Leslie. Couldn't do so. Kick there from Williams around the body. It's going to come back from the Magpies. It's going to find the boundary line, is it? O'Connor's going to try and keep it in with a gallant effort and couldn't do so. It's over for a boundary throw-in. We've travelled five minutes. And it's back in our customary spot. I've seen two umpire first today. Um, and that umpire, his name just sort of, uh, I've lost it at the moment. But he had a man bun for an Pete, umpire. Pete Perillo. Perillo. And then the wind's blown it out. So I've seen two first today. A man bun being blown out by the wind. So the ball's tossed back in about 60 around from the sale goal. Goes to a one-on-one. -on -one. No one able to win it cleanly. Tackle applied there by Hudson Holmes. Ball spits out the back of the contest. Favours Lindsay. He gets a handball onto a teammate who was under all sorts of pressure. And they do well to get the kick around the corner there from Jack Blair. He gets it up towards half forward. Sale advantage two on one. They get the hands in the footy now through Will Leslie. He gets around one, pops a handball over the top. And I don't want to sound like that guy from 1970s, but just kick the bloody thing along with the breeze. I'd be screaming if I was down there supporting Scud. Yeah, they uh, don't want to stuff around with it too much. We've got a boundary throwing out of side. Five minutes into this. All important, second quarter. Magpies kicking with the breeze. They've got to take advantage of it. Did take one thaggy 12 minutes before they got their first goal. So they're just sort of sussing out the conditions out there. Bray with a double fister. And then running onto a spark. Got a handball forward to a teammate in Lindsay. Nice little pick up. The forward handball is going to work out, does it? It tries to get to Hayes. Magpies said, I'll get it. Although Freeman had a fresh airy. Ball now in dispute. Hayes again gives it back now to Bates. They go backwards by hand again. And now they're under pressure. The Magpies are good. Tackle. Johnson couldn't get his kick away. And the free kick's going to be paid to the power. Jack Blair always buzzing around the ball. It's a brilliant tackle, too. He read it so well. Johnson thought he had more time than what he did. And uh, it was just ran, ran down beautifully by Blair. Blair with a little chip over to Sparks. One hander. Couldn't complete it. And kept it in, though. Dribbled along the ground. Leslie's there across half back for the Magpies. He's going to thump it down the line. Oh. Egmelesi Smith with a slip catch. A beautiful grab in the end. He's on the wing. He could thump this all the way in. Remember, it travels a little bit extra with the wind. Oh. But that kick goes to Johnson just out of his reach. Second effort has to be good. Coming the other way was Gilmore. He got crunched by a walker tackle. 52 metres out from the Magpies goal. Ball up. I don't know where the footy smarts goes out the window with these sort of conditions, but a player like Egg Molesi smith should know better to get it inside 50. So ball goes up, ball goes down, not a lot occurs. The umpire trots on in to toss it in the air a second time. That'll be Buddha Malone, the umpire out there, plying his trade on this Sunday afternoon. He'll toss this one in the air 49 metres up from the sale goal. It lands about 47 metres up from the sale goal. Bray gets a tap on it, only as far as Egmont. Smith, whose hack kick goes into the forward 50. 
Walker settles underneath it. No one can take the ball cleanly. It stacks on the mill. Free kick, Blair. The umpire's found a free kick to go the way of the coach, Jared Blair. And he shows zero interest. Boxing come in the attacking side. Runs around Bodie Walker on the mark and then kicks long down the line. The boy's set. The big oh, fly from behind. Oh, yes, sir. Brother to brother, Jack Blair gets up and about the little fella with the big hops, takes a grab. Oh, no. And he <laughs> kicks the ball back over his own head virtually. No, he doesn't. He finds little uh, McMillan, and that's Connor McMillan out there about 15 metres down the road. His kick goes as far as he can into the breeze, all of about 15 metres and sail winner at ground level. Cracking in hard there was Shannon Lang. Sling tackle. Sling tackle. And a sling tackle's been paid. Free kick will go the way of sail, and it goes to Jordan Descent. He shows intent to come attacking side, which is a positive, but then ignores that and just chips a little 9 on 45 down the line. Ball gets out the front of the contest and is won it by sale at ground level. Quick set of hands there. Brad Descent gets it, pops it forward. Now gets up towards Egmelesi Smith, a one-on-one -on -one down there with McKinnon. He takes his head off, and the umpire says free kick. And it'll be Isaac Chug taking the free kick on the halfback flank far side. And he'll just settle things down here, Scud. He will. Halfback looks down the line and kicks a wobbly one in board. It's going to hold up Lang. Takes the grab, and he pushes back true centre wing. Out of side, comes inboard. It's a wobbly upside-down drop punt. Thomas read it better in front of Jack Leslie, who's continued to stay forward. There's an issue, I reckon, with Jack. He's one of the best Ruckman, best players in the comp, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're just trying to get him through this particular game. Thomas's kick went wide, out of bounds on the far side of the ground. Right in front of the Club Eastwood, the old scoreboard out there, one of our sponsors here on Gippsland Live. Of course, you become a member today at Club Eastwood and also got reciprocal rights at the Moey Racing Club as well. They're racing there tomorrow, Scotty. Ball toss back in. Bray on the right side this time because the wind's blowing in that direction. Gets a double fist of forward. No one can get it at ground level initially. Now Blair goes in, puts his head over the footy. Takes off like a little linebacker in your game, Scott, the NFL, and tries to get the ball four or five metres forward. Ooh, just starting to fire up next week as well. So the big boys go up and down. No one gets a hand on the footy. It's Sparks popping a handball over the top more in hope than in luck. Picked up there by Gilmore. He hacks the ball forward. Coming out to meet it. Full-chested McInnes. He's got the boys running back towards goal, but he holds on to the footy, and the umpire says, you've moved. So play on. He gets around one and two. Gets just inside 50. Lowers the eyes. Puts a little kick out there in front of a teammate. Pops a handball up to T-Mac. He gets it over the top with another little handball. No one can take it cleanly. Ooh. The umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to Hunter Tiziani. And this is the right side to kick a goal from, Scott. Tell no, the people how it'll happen. No, there's no chance. He's going to go the banana kick too, guys, as well, by no, the look of it. There's no chance nope. he can kick it from there. Uh, you could have 100 shots and you'll miss 100. I guarantee you, there's no way he can kick a goal from this spot, Boxer. Oh, I'm going to back him in, Scotty. I think he's got a fair chance. If he just takes a little bit of the leaf, he's a little bit closer than Lindsay as well. So he needs to get... There we go. He just needs to get back on the mark, and he's gone back about 20, 25 metres off the mark. If he scores a point, I think he's done well. So to set the scene, he's going to kick it from about 35 out in a 45-degree angle. He's going to go low and hard, it's my tip. He does. He swings it back beautifully, but it's gone skinny side. No chance. Minor score. Daryl Cooling's correct. Box is wrong. That's a great effort. That's it. That's a great effort. 100% it is. To get a point from there is a great effort. Just the second score this quarter. Both behinds to Wonthaggy, who are 2 5 17 on the Club Eastwood scoreboard, leading by 16 points over. So we're still on one behind one point. Big moment, all thanks to Metricon Homes, Australia's number one builder, eight years strong. The Magpies must get a wriggle on with this breeze. Here's their chance. Free. Uh, Douse gave it across to the run of Lang. One bounce. Now lowers the eyes. He's found Brad Descent and he's in the middle of the uh, Bensdale City Oval. If he starts it to the right, he might be a chance, but he's going to go to the dead pocket. He's going out wide to the outside 50. He's not even inside 50 yet. Tainch has it. And you're not going to score goals from there, Magpies. He had the opportunity to come to the top side. And I just feel he's missed an opportunity as Tainch kicks it now long and hard and is going to put it straight down the throat of it. Jackson Williams, I think it is, on the last line. For the power. So Williams kicks it high. That might even come back to him. It's going to go out wide. It might be out of bounds on the full. It is. That is a tough kick from there. So Egg Melissa Smith's going to have a shot for this one here as well, too. Scud left footer on the wrong side of the ground with, with the breeze in his face. Might have just been in the field of play box, I think. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Landed on the line out I've, there. I've got a quick round of grounds in the A grade netball at quarter time. It's 9 12 in favour of Benz, though, who are playing Terrellgan this afternoon. Thank you very much, Boxer. All Jeez. thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture. They'll be doing it tough to get the ball in the net through there. Yep. In this breeze. But they toss this one back in. Johnny McGuinness grabs it out of the ruck, pops a handball down to Egmelisi Smith. He goes handball over the top to no one in particular. And Bray comes in and lays a big tackle, and the umpire will come in and toss this one up 48 metres out from the sale goal. 
Their dual major, McGuinness does his thing and gets it out in a bit of space, goes to Egmolesi Smith, and don't tell me he has had a shot from there, has he? He has. He has had a shot from there. A left foot banana into the teeth of the breeze. He's gone minor score only, though. And that's Sale's second score of the day. Two behinds, two points, trailing by 15 points on Wonthaggy, who are 2 5 17. Club East with the scoreboard. Looks like someone's left the door open to the Portaloo out the back. We've had the toilet roll blow across the ground. <laughs> as, as Niles. Kicks out a full back. It's a scrubby little kick. Got to the top of his defensive 50. Douse gave up the footy. Head over. It was Sparks looking for a free kick. I just sense he dropped there and looked for that one. Scud, you think it could be a cheer squad throwing a stream right after a goal? or Cash been just a roll. Could have been. been. Yeah, yeah. Might have been. Actually, it was a free kick in the end. It was Jackson Williams who had it. So Williams, defensive 50, is going to kick to the outer side. Scrabby oh. kick. It's going to come back. Douse had it, then lost it. Hennis tried to crash his way through. Williams butters up. Kicks around his body to the wing. Uh, Hutchins tries to trap it, and he does okay in the end, and then a teammate comes in, Johnson, and we'll have a stoppage. <laughs> Sorry, Scott, he's actually stuck in the back of a bloke's pants. He's, <laughs> I think he's, uh, he didn't realise he had it left uh, when he left the cubicle. Can someone let him know? <laughs> so it's Mitch Dowse winning the clearance, hacking the ball forward, but the umpire's found a free kick, so it'll come back to centre wing. Well, yesterday we thought, yesterday uh, Hutchie thought that if ever there was going to be a day that we could see pigs fly, he thought that a uh, local pig from a farm from Mafra might fly. Today we might see a guy with a portaloo stuck to him <laughs> flying across the bench, that's in the oh. oval. As long as we don't see a goat with a uh, motor block. <laughs> With a gearbox tied to a gearbox. <laughs> no, for those just joining us, Boxer wanted to tell but, a joke about a goat. We yeah, didn't go then, with it. And then maybe bingo. We'll, no. We'll, we'll think about that. No, we're half not. Time. We finally retrieved the ball. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> it was in Bansdale. So it'll be sale far side of the ground, centre wing. Mitch Freeman dropped the ball in front of Lang, and I think he asked for 50. <laughs> so Lang kicks a, well, a Kernahan floating oh. mud punt kick into the forward 50. It bounces down there, picked up nicely by... Jack Johnston, but he's wrapped up in a tackle straight away. And the umpire will come in and toss this one up 35, 40 metres out directly in front of the sale goal. Played 15 minutes kicking with the cyclone and they're yet to trouble the scorers. And they'll fail to do so from this stoppage either as McGuinness is tackled by Bray before the ball can spill. I've just had a message that the scoreboard clock's not working at the moment too, so we'll try and update this through. The, it's the 15 minute mark now in the second quarter. Here's Lang from the stoppage. Quickly ball to boot though. It goes out of bounds on the full. And this will be an interesting kick. It's on the near side. It's on the scoreboard side of the ground at Fansdale City <laughs> over here. All class from the sale cheer squad. They got the footy and just dropped it yep. over the fence and said, pick it up yourself, Isaac. And Isaac did just that. Now, which he has to come to the near side, and he hugs the boundary and holds up in the breeze. Nicely oh, done. This player's playing a good game. Jackson Williams for Gippsland Suzuki. Scud, they're prepared to actually come to this side as well. They've had players push across this side with one thaggy. Well, Williams is upside down, drop punts, not going to work. Freeman takes a mark. He's going to quickly play on. Hamble over the top to Douse. Douse's kick into a dangerous spot. Here's their chance for the Magpies. Brad Desson takes a mark. And this is a much better chance for goal. This will go dead straight. Don't worry about the breeze. You aim for the middle. It will go straight through the middle for Brad Desson here. A much needed one. Big moments for Metricon Holmes. Love where you live with Metricon. It's Australia's number one home builder. I'm not trying to act like a toss here, but isn't it an easy game when you get the ball inside 50 quickly to your big forwards? So this is what they've let themselves down so far this quarter. So they're on the right side of the ground to kick their goals here. Brad Descent comes in, looking for the first for the Magpies. 16 and a half minutes first quarter. Bang. Kicked on its way, and it did go dead straight. It did, Scott, and you called it very well. You only saw it about 100 times pre-game. Players were kicking it dead straight too. So the clear message from me to the sales side is take a leap out of your book just then. You've got the ball inside 50, one or two kick in, bang. You've got your big forward in front. He marks he's not going to be beaten one-on-one -on -one this afternoon. Looks like this top side pockets to where to kick a goal from. There you go. There's your advice. Use it. And sales first goal has come at the 17-minute mark of the second quarter. They're one two, eight on the Club Eastwood Bent Sales scoreboard. Trailing by nine points, one thank you, two five seventeen. And a big interchange there, Egg Melissa Smith off Bodie Walker on. So Bodie will go down front and give him that third tall option down there in the air the box has been screaming for. Meanwhile, back in the middle, McGinnis goes up against Bray. We'll call that one oh. a draw, but bursting through onto it at speed was Hudson Holmes. He gets a hack handball forward. Ball ends up at centre half four. Ripping in there now is Mitch Douse. He's coming to the game. He gets it up there to Butcher. Butcher pops it up in the air. The big boys come forward. Beautiful fist over the top there from Jackson Williams. Having a day out is he. Lands right in the guts of Sparks. He pops a handball over the top but turns it over in a dangerous spot. 
Way to numbers wins out though through Juan Faggy and they've got the ball in Patterson's hands. Patterson puts Ooh. his kick up a little bit too much oxygen on that. Allows McInnes to get a fist on it. But Juan Faggy through the runner. Sparks have got the ball on the far side. Running it into the teeth of the breeze now is Aiden Lindsay. He pops it up to the forward 50. Playing in front down there was Jack Blair, but the ball doesn't carry to him. And little hack kick forward by Will Leslie sees the ball out of bounds for a throw in on the half forward flank far side of the ground. It's 17 plays, eight, 18 minutes gone in the second quarter. Bansdale's netballers must have had the breeze that quarter. It's a half time, 27 to 13. Terrell didn't score in that second quarter. Cool. Gee whiz. You need to have a chat to someone, boxer. Yeah, I know. Boundary throw in out of side. 18 minute and a half minutes gone. Man short of the two ruckmen. And McLaren quickly gathered it, kicked it around his body, just kept it in. Very well done. Gained a few meterage, and over it goes for a boundary throw in out of side. Here at the Bansdale City Over. Are we taking those this afternoon, Paul? Oh, out in the pools. Uh, all boundary throw-ins on the oh, far side. boundary throw-ins, but out in the had, pools, yeah. Had quite a few of them. Yep. We've got another one, and the youngster on the far side will walk in 15. Good throw-in. In the front spot there was McGuinness, tapped it straight down. McLaren left it behind. Sparks is having a good day as well. Forward handball to no one but the boundary. Uh, under pressure, doesn't get the deliberate, and it's well done. Ryan Sparks had a great year on the Collingwood VFL list. Back into this side for the remainder of the power season. He's had a fantastic year. 19 minutes in, another boundary throw in. Margin sits at nine points at the moment. One thaggy lead it. Ground level work there. Tackling by McLaren. He's going to be rewarded. No, the ball pops out the back. Bray gathers it, does a little don't argue, then gets ball to boot, goes down the line. McGuinness off his shin, has to go again. Jared Blair's there, working hard. Boundary line beats them both. Over it goes. I've got a numbskull that wants the NRL score. I'll call him a numbskull. <laughs> Don't give him the time of day. Uh, no, I'll give it to him because we give everything to everybody uh, on this uh, on Gippsland Live. And it's uh, the Newcastle Knights take on the Who Cares Gold Coast Titans. <laughs> uh, Are you serious? A, I'm serious. It's the score is 24 to 4, Newcastle's way. There you go, you numbskull. All right. We well, just know the uh, Melbourne Storm with the minor premiers, and they're the team you need to follow. That's all Correct. we need to know. So Bray wins that clearance. It ends up in the hands of Holmes. And then through Lang, they pop a handball forward here to the runner. Hennis, he comes in. And Chug, the extra defender, floats across and takes a solid clunk, cutting off the sail forward for a Boxer, what are you doing with Chug? Loose man causing a bit of concern. Uh, I think it's time to roll Freeman down now, I reckon, and uh, make it a contest. His kick gets to about 85 from the sail goal. They win the ball at ground level. Joy Gilmore of one faggy pops a handball over there to a teammate in Jackson Williams. Man on fire at the moment, Williams, his kick goes down to oh. wing and Mark's taken out there by Sparks. This guy's been pretty good too for Gippsland Suzuki. So Sparks on the, just on the defensive side, centre wing, far side of the ground, kicking into the teeth of a hurricane. 19th disposal for Sparks. It's a big half of footy. I played two seasons, didn't touch that many times. <laughs> his kick goes to centre half, four, the big boys fly, no one can bring the ball to ground, picked up there by McInnes, he hacks it in four, one on one in front of the footy, Blair strong! Blair stands his ground and takes the mark, that's half the battle won. Not a bad spot. I don't like it, though. No, I don't like it either. He's on that far side, so the wind's really pushing uh, across there. He's going to have to really it will be drop smart. Short. It'll drop short, but if he gets to his left uh, to give him a little bit more angle or just to centralise the kick, it might give him a bit more of a chance as Chug comes off the ground. The loose man will be important here. You've got to be standing at the top of the square for me. So in comes Blair, and that's of the jack variety. He's got to kick this 35 into the teeth of the breeze. Goes in for a short pass. Oh, Clever. Okay. Too smart by half. Perfect. We were all playing checkers and he was playing chess. And who does he find but that man again, Aiden Lindsay. He's been on fire in the second quarter. Very quiet first quarter, but he's probably touched it six or seven times now. And he'll go back from 25 out directly in front. Still no gimme. Yeah, one in the first quarter, Scotty, and this is his fifth in the second. This is, a, this is where you can kick him, Scotty. Left goal post, work it back nicely. So in he comes for a really important into the breeze goal. He side no. leads, he's kicked a bit of dirt, he's John Doritiched it, and it's ended up out of bounds on the full. And not only has he missed the goals, he's, he's the missed them now. by 25 metres. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't even start that left, no. did he? Well, we. So free kick sale, back pocket. Let's attack through the middle of the ground, if you don't mind. Paint. And it's Great Paint kick. with the long kick. Bray double fists it back into the forward 50. Pops over the top there towards Bates. Bates gets a handball forward to Blair. Blair creates space where there isn't. He gets onto his left leg, goes to the top of the square. Good defensive work there initially. Cooper McInnes now gets his hands on it. 
Numbers went out for sale, though, and they're going to attack on this open side here through Butcher if the ball sits for him. It doesn't. It's cut off beautifully in there by one faggy. They've oh. turned it over in a dangerous spot, oh. and it's Johnson off to the races here. He pops it out there in front of Lang. Lang will mark this 50 out. 48 and 50. 50. And a 50 metre penalty no. will be huge, but he gets up and plays on straight away. They've gone end to end. They've gone coast to coast, and he's gone far side for a minor score. And that is 139 on the Club Eastwood Van Sale scoreboard for sale. They're trailing by eight points now. Uh, one thank you, 317. I reckon if Lang had his time again, he would have stopped and had a shot. I actually thought it was going to be a 50. The way Pirello was uh, yeah. making the arm movement, I thought it was a 50. But anyway, time again. He uh, has a set shot because he would have kicked it. He would have, yeah. He would have had the uh, leg no worries. So Knowles comes in, kicks out a full back, goes to the point of the square, sort of holds up on that occasion. Wind just dropped off maybe. Gets out wide. Uh, head over the footy there was Nick McNeil. Somehow the Magpies get it forward. Here's Lang. Close to the boundary line. Gilmore closes. Left it behind did Lang there. Sparks again. Handled over the shoulder. Lang grabbed it. Got tackled. Gilmore now in a tight, confined area. Ball to boot, and that has gone in the Mitchell River as well. He's kicked the metre. Yep, we're going to need another footy, I reckon. So Friedman at the moment's playing that fifth on baller at the minute too. So he's allow, is it, they're actually allowing Chug to be that loose man, so they've got that extra player on ball. But it's not really working in their favour. They've got the ball inside. How many times 50 this quarter, Paul? Uh, five, one, thank you, ten sale. So there you go. They've got it inside ten times for... One goal, three this quarter. The search party have declared this dead, I reckon. They're waving their arms and they're just saying the footy's over the fence and we ain't going to jump it. Yeah, well, we could have told them that a couple of minutes ago. As, uh, the spare ball comes from behind the goals this time. Probably stolen go. by the thirds. <laughs> <laughs> under 18 thirds, kids. So we've got a boundary throw in after all this. 24 and a half minutes gone. Into the second quarter for the Moe Racing Club. You might have just heard through the effects, Mike. Four minutes to go. Big thump down by Bray. Landed in the hands there of Lindsay. Somehow got his handball away. Back to Bray. Kick to open space. McGuinness is just going to give up on this one. Is he? Yep. The boundary line will beat him. And a little bit forward to centre for the power. They lead at the moment still by eight points. As we said, we'll get a good indication after a half of football how the two sides are going. We sort of expect to be a two-goal sort of breeze. And one thing you've just managed two in the first, but Sale now only got the one. In this second. So McGuinness wins the tap, but not 21 in advantage. And a tackle's laid there by Sparks of Juan Thaggy, and we'll have a secondary stoppage. This one will be just about smack bang in the middle on the far side of the ground. Umpire Malone tosses it up. McGuinness, as he's done most of the day, gets a tap, brings it back in board. It favours Hutchins. He flicks up a handball there. Really nice bit of work. Kick goes to centre half forward. The big boys set themselves underneath. Oh, but going back to man with two first names, Jacob Thomas. Takes a lovely grab and then finds a teammate by foot, which is no small task today. And Ryan Sparks marks on the half-back flank. And he pats the dog out there and says, let's just settle things down for a tick. And then goes thump, but he puts it straight into the derriere of his man on the mark in Campbell. And the ball ricochets the old Irish import on the half-forward flank here. Free kick. And Sailor win a free kick for a high contact. Uh, one thaggy will win a free kick for high contact. And who else would it be but Ryan Sparks? So he'll go back and hopefully this time for his sake not put it into the rear end of the bloke on the mark. And he does get it over the head of Egg Melissa Smith. The umpire's found a 50. Wow. And that is huge on a day like this to get a 50. That's four kicks into the breeze for a little bit of uh, how you're going to umpire Perillo, who does not appreciate any feedback, I can assure you. So that'll bring him right up here to half forward. So two kicks from goal now, 60 metres out. Maybe three. Yeah, he does drive a convertible, Pete, and uh, <laughs> I bet you he doesn't. Uh, he wouldn't have had the hood down today. That's because the lid's off. Correct. So Sparks kicks the ball underground, basically, to get it into the forward 50. Umpire's found another free kick. It's Perillo. This time it'll go the way of sale. Yeah, McLaren's the uh, recipient of that free kick. Inside his defensive 50. Margin sits at eight points at the moment. 26-minute uh, mark of the second quarter. Got called to play on. A little bit of hesitation. The dumping kick out. Goes into the middle of the ground. Thomas was back there again. Jack Leslie just has not looked interested this afternoon. He's kicked to half forward. Jonty McGuinness can't complete the mark. Ground level comes Lindsay. Swoops on it. Took on a tackle. It got swung around 360. The umpire said Sling. holding the footy. Sling. Sling. And Lindsay's going to get it back. Lindsay comes to the top side and going to kick it down Tainter's throat. To the opposition. The Magpies, they want to move it quickly. They play on to Holmes, kicks it long and out wide. Johnson's going to go back, can't complete the mark, and falls to ground. And now Thomas with a left foot kick. 
High tackled. Clever. Really clever by the coach here to give away the free kick to the Shepherder because it stopped one Thaggy getting the ball forward. So now Sale will set up behind the footy. So the free kick with Gilmore. So Gilmore has it, 27 three-quarter minutes. He's been good this afternoon, uh, Gilmore, as well. I just had a little bit of technical difficulty there, Scudman. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Kicks down the line. Going back is Hennis, front spot. Yeah, good work. Takes the mark for the Magpies. He's going to switch it into the middle of the ground. Straight down Geordie Desson's throat. Don't want to go back to that bottom side. All the numbers are on the top side. You might as well come out here. It's going to drop short. Thomas is there. Leslie with a punch on was good. He's going to find the boundary line, is he? And it tops and stops and pops and dribbles over. 28 minute mark. They trail by eight, the Magpies. He's been huge this afternoon, Jacob Thomas. He's marked everything that's come down his way. I know that Leslie might be having a question mark over him, but he's still had a great game. McGuinness in the front spot, thumps it down. Buddy Walker decided to have contact and then. Sparks chases after the footy. We'll do it again. Another boundary throw in real. Moment of the game for the Magpies. The big moment, thanks to Metricon. Australia's number one builder for eight years strong. So McKinnis gets the tap down this time, but not quite able to take it cleanly was McLaren. Oh, Hat kicks oh, forward oh. by Sparks, and it finds his teammate right in the plums, and the big ruckman has <laughs> gone what? down. Oh, and the upside for the ruckman is he's now got to jump in the air. <laughs> Up you go. <laughs> and and, and oh, oh, that is courage personified. <laughs> Happy if, Father's Day indeed. What if McKinnis oh, had just put the knee into him <laughs> two minutes later? Let's hope he's a dad already, though. <laughs> oh, now, uh, <laughs> so umpire Perillo will toss it into the air. Bray does well to get a hand on it, but it goes only as far as Holmes. Holmes hacks it into the forward 50 for sale. The big boys fly. Who's front and centre? No one initially, but Ryan Sparks is down there defending resolutely. Gets a handball off to his little teammate there in c -Mac. He dishes off another handball, and one thuggy look to clear. They go long down the line. Blair goes back. The umpire says play on. Four sets of hands are on it. And I'll come in and ball this one up with only a minute or so to go. And one thuggy leads 17 to 9 with that minute or so to play, Scott. Yeah, it shouldn't be too long to go now. And you sense that the one thing defence have done really well. McLaren just got a little tug of the jumper. Oh. And you sense yeah, not long to go. As the siren sounds now, he's got a free kick, McLaren, with the breeze. I think this is very ambitious. He's extracting the Michael if he has a kick here. He's dead set <laughs> extracting the Michael. No. Hudson Holmes says have a crack. He got onto the barrel, all right? It's travelling, travelling, and it's still dropped 30 metres short. So 30 minutes the quarter went. One thaggy lead at 2 5 17. They held up strong into the breeze. Sale of 1 3 9. The margin is eight points at half time. We've got the half time wrap coming up after the break. It is all thanks to Gippsland Mowers and this Gippsland Live broadcast on your Sunday afternoon. The elimination final is all thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. It's time for this week's Gippsland League Top 5. Let's go. Kicking us off at number one, Derek Egmolesi smith here from Sale. He had to think quick. He was front and centre, got it over his head, and a great goal. Number two, this one's an absolute peach. Cade Reuters here from Terrelgan. This is tough. He's right on the boundary line. How does he do that? That is one of the best you'll see. Goal of the day, winner. You are not a contender, it's the winner. You are kidding me, Timmy. That is one of the best we have seen all year. From... Number three, it's Blair Roscoe here from Terrelgan. Beautiful little pick up this, but even better evading his opponent. Then he just goes bang, lines it up, puts it home. Oh, 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 the youngsters put it through. Good. <laughs> How good is this great game of AFL? This is unreal. And he's on the wrong side there too for a left footer. That could have gone anywhere. Number four here, Jared Stewart here on the throw in from Leon Gather. He just takes off. He says, catch me if you can, I'm putting it through.
Number five, it's Liam Masters here from Moe. He just gets the hand pass right on the paint of 50. Bangs at home. Uh, welcome back. It is half time, and the power led it by 14 points at quarter time. They kicked two goals with the breeze, only managed the two points in that quarter, did one thaggy against the breeze. While for the Magpies, they managed one goal, two. They narrowed the margin to eight points, and you just sense that one thaggy just get the advantage with a half of football. Goal scorers, it is one thaggy. Uh, Noah Anderson and Jackson Williams, as I said in the first quarter. Sale, Brad Desson, getting that one of you just heard in the highlights there in the second quarter. Paul Carter's working through all the key stats for us. This is a halftime wrap, and it is all thanks to our good friends at Gippsland Mowers. Here's Paul Carter. Well, the inside 50s with the wind went Sale's way 12-6 at halftime. One thing he lead that stat 21-14. Uh, again, once again, uh, the Magpies won the clearances 10-6 in the second quarter. So Sales leading 25-12. They lead the centre clearances Sale as well 4-2. Free kicks 18 to Wontagi, 11 to Sale. Marks uh, Wontagi leading at 27-19. Also contested. Marks going Wontagi's way 8-6 and 4-3. Marks inside 50 to Wontagi. Uh, the Battle of the Ruckman, we saw Shannon Bray with 12 hit-outs that quarter. He's got 22 to half-time. Uh, Johnny McGuinness continuing on with the great work, 14. He's had 35 hit-outs to half-time. Huge second quarter by Ryan Sparks. In the second quarter alone, seven kicks, nine handballs, three marks, two clearances, one inside 50. Total of 16 disposals in the second quarter. He's had 24 to half-time. Uh, the other ones we're following for Wontaki Jack Blair's on 13. 9 to Aidan Lindsay, 7 to Josh Bates, um, uh, 6 to Isaac Chug, 5 to Jared Blair. For Sale, the leading stat winner of the ones we are following is Shannon Lang, 10 in the first quarter, 8 in the second, 18 to half time, 14 to Hudson Holmes, 
Uh, 10 to Derek Egg, Malusi Smith. 9 to Johnny McGuinness. And 7 apiece to Jack McLaren and Jack Johnson. Well, there it is, all the key stats. Sparks are certainly having a big game thanks to Gippsland Suzuki. Don't forget the halftime wrap. It's thanks to Gippsland Mowers. And as the nice weather starts to roll around, albeit with a little bit of breeze this afternoon, it's time to get in to Gippsland Mowers. They are your local blokes who service what they sell and the only professional Husqvarna dealer in the whole of Gippsland. And, of course, they have a top range there of Husqvarna mowers, blowers and chainsaws. Everything you need to keep your yard tidy. Go in and see Hayden and the team. And they are on Gippsland, uh, Gippsland mowers on the Princess Drive in Morwell. Boxer's got some scores for us. Uh, how does it look around Gippsland and the Valley? Yeah, look, some of the scores are starting to increase a little bit. Maybe the wind is dying around in, in the Valley and just the rain's starting to kick in. But... In the Mickey Sam Football League, played at Yanar Foster, 4 4 28. They lead Newborough at half time, 2 6 18. North Gippsland Football League, Woodside, 6 4 40. So a big uh, second quarter there for the Cats uh, to Hayfield, 2 3 15. Uh, in yesterday's game in the East Gippsland Football League, Boys Club, 8 1 60, defeated Wyung, 8 8 56. So they go through to the grand final now to play Lucknow next week. In the Amio uh, District Grand Final last week, played at Swan Reach. It was Amio uh, Benambra, 16-9-105, defeated Swiss Creek, 4-5-29. In the Allenbank League, half-time there, Nirem South, 3-2-20. Oh, sorry, that was quarter time. Uh, Nirem South, 5-5-35. It's a long worry, 5-5-35, so a great game there. And in the West Gippsland Football League, Nana Goon, 4-5-29. Who's that bloke taking the sandwich? Then? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Nana Goon, 4-5-29, Inverloch. 5-2-32. Scum in. Thank you very much, uh, Boxer. Halftime wrap is all done for our good friend Scott. Gippsland Mowers. Yeah. So this, this week I was uh, obviously in the car a fair bit and listening to TR, as I always do, and noticed that you've been doing a few ads lately. So a few cashies now, mate, uh, just to uh, enhance the wallet a little bit. So just, just part of the role, Nick. I'm not sure what uh, what you're getting at. but that's... No, no, I wasn't getting at it. Just good to see that you're doing things outside being an account manager. And, Thank you. And uh, yeah, you're no. just bringing your beautiful deluxe voice to... Some ads during the week. Have you been asked to do any ads yet, Box? They did. They asked me a few. I was just busy at the time. I'm not sure they have. One where TRFM was multilingual. But they, they asked me to do some, call some bingo. No, the, no, 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 no. No, they didn't. No, we're going to do a break. We're done. The uh, halftime wrap is done. The umpires are out there. The players are getting close, so we'll cut you off. I know that mic wasn't working. You're not doing the bingo joke. I'm not allowing it here on Gippsland Live. Halftime wrap's all done. It's an eight-point margin in favour of Wonthaggy. It's an elimination final. There is a lot at stake. The Magpies are making their way back out of the ground for the big third quarter. It's all thanks to Gippsland Mowers. Thanks, mate.
Uh, welcome back to the Bairnsdale City Oval. Someone's going to win and someone will progress in the 2024 Gippsland League final series. Someone will have their season finish and go home on Sunday afternoon at the moment. It is the one thank you power leading by eight points. We've had the halftime wrap. Scotty, what are your thoughts? Which way do they go? One thank you, you're in their huddle, so I'm getting out of their positions. What are you What are you going to start the game? What are Magpies going to do? Well, they've, they've just got to defend like uh, what they did in that first quarter. They can't afford to be more than 20 points down at three-quarter time or it's game away. I think they missed a big opportunity in that second quarter. They tended to attack too wide. I know they tried to come this side where the wind's you know, going to allow you to attack from, but I think they need to just go more down the middle, especially those big guys. And as Box has been screaming for all day, kick it in there quick and fast to the big boys. He takes a mark and kicks a goal. But it was the only time they really took that route. The rest of the time they came wide around the boundaries. So I think Sale are going to have to defend. The, the seventh defender is going to be key this quarter. Chug was fantastic for one thaggy. Holmes did it well in the first quarter. So we'll see if he does it again. And I just noticed here Egg Melissi Smith going into the middle. And that's the one, exactly right. Egg Melissi Smith goes into the middle. Holmes goes back. Interesting, Jack Johnson starts his third quarter on the bench. And Nick Boxlochino will keep an eye on Mitch Douse as well. He didn't uh, go out and warm up in that uh, halftime break. So let's have a look at this for the third quarter for McDonald. Lang trying to bust his way through and get it going in the Magpies way. If they can get an early one into the breeze will be very important. No one's kicked a goal into the breeze, kicking towards the city end of the ground. Bray does the ruck duties and will get the tap down on that occasion. Doesn't get out of the congested area. And then hesitation there from the Magpies, Tainch and McGuinness. McGuinness had to go low and Tiziani wraps him up. I did notice that he was just uh, running the boundary now, warming up, but he's got a fair limp on him at the minute too. So his afternoon might be limited, I reckon. Bray with a tap down again, just starting to get busy. A little quick kick from Tainch, goes straight up and down McMillan. And that's Thomas Variety will take the mark at centre-half back. Going to come to the top side. Jack Blair's the target. Got underneath it. It's going to drop. And beautifully red. Jack Blair does very well. Right foot kick to half forward. This is a good build-up. This has got Holmes written all over it. Although, big Geordie Desson says, I'll take the contested mark at the defensive 50. So inside his defensive 50. He's got the option to give the handball. He does give the handball to Holmes, who can go further afield, short by foot. And a mark taken down there by Ben Hall. Hall gives it back to Holmes on the drive-by. They're attacking on the positive side at the moment. Cutting it off down there is O'Connor. Can't get his hands on it. The big ruckman cracks in. He's fantastic in the air and does a really good job at ground level as well. Jonty McInnes, and he's created that stoppage in the forward half for Sale. And he'll do the ruck work here against Bray. Umpire Malone tosses it in the air. Doesn't get much purchase on that one. It went about shoulder high, and it allows Sparks to burst onto it. That's the first of his 30 touches for the second half. He kicks it in the forward 50, but blazes away, and Holmes reads it well. Takes the mark, cuts things off, and he'll probably go defensive side here where he's got Jordan to sent on. He's got one on the attacking side if he wants, Scotty. Doesn't go there. So he goes over to sent. That's a great kick, and that's a really good kick and finds Will Leslie. So it'll be good for him to get into the game in the second half for the Sale boys. And Leslie now just inside his own defensive 50. It's a, well, it wasn't a very impressive run up to kick the footy, but he does get it about 40 into the breeze, which is worth its weight in gold. And Chuck sees it over the boundary line for a ball in, far side of the ground. So Douse is still doing his test on the boundary line here, so I'll keep an eye on that one too. But I don't realize, I don't think they're really trying to hug the boundary, are they? They're kicking down the line, but uh, the wind's really doing some havoc at the moment. Ball gets over the back. No Ruckman can get it. Lang handles over his shoulder under pressure. Tiziani fights hard to get to the front spot. And McLaren closes, and the boundary line closes on them both. And we'll do it again. Do you think if Sparks had his time again as well, he would have kicked to the fat side rather than obviously he picked out Holmes and that ball coming inside 50 but uh, just that entry was perfect, but just uh, didn't find its mark. Yeah, like the power did with their chug, loose man. Sale have done it with Holmes. Both experience and very smart footballers. Quick kick by Blair goes high. Leslie and Cooper McGuinness just had a bit of a uh, bit of a throw of an arm to the mid-draft area. Both not happy. Both run back to their starting positions. Boundary throwing. Margin still at eight points. In his opening third quarter. Douse just shook his head to the bench as he came back from a little trot. So ball gets tossed back in, gets out the back, Bray takes it. McGuinness wraps him up in a tackle and the umpire comes in and says, we'll ball this one up. 35 metres out directly in front of the power goal. Indicating that Douse's day is done. Yeah, he did give a little shake of the head and go and sit himself back down. And strike me as a bloke who's planning on going out there and having 30 touches in the second half, put it that way. Scott. Okay. Well, Johnny McGuinness just has a bit of a uh, footwear problem. He's fixed that. Ruck duties will go at it. So he's been re-shooed. Ball gets tapped down. 
really crucial kick on goal here. Early doors from McNeil goes across the far side. No score. And we'll ball this one in about 12 metres across. So the boundary umpire, the young fella, will come in a few yards here and he'll throw this into the teeth of the breeze. So you reckon front and centre might be the way to go. Let's see, Joy Gilmore gets around there. The big boys go up at it. Egg Melissa Smith lands oh. in his stomach. He grabs a foot, he drops it when tackled. The umpire says, play on. Now a little snap around the corner. It was by Gilmore, but it only goes through for a minor score, and that gets things underway here in the second half. At the four-minute mark of the third quarter, exactly, Scotty on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard, Wontaggy 2 6 18, now lead by nine points over sales, 1 3 9. Interesting to see, though, that the, the both sides now have spread across the ground to give them more options when they're kicking out as well. So, Sale might be prepared to play this top side to attack uh, this bad end, we will call it. So, he goes to the far side, does Hudson Holmes. Did he keep it in the field of play? No, he cannot. That's not where you want to kick out a fullback. However, it's a tough spot for one thing to attack from. They quickly roll around, and the kick comes back in. They might just kick this one out of bounds on the full, but Hudson Holmes put one hand up oh. and then had to rush it through. She Knowles' has kicked really got good purchase on it from one thing, and that's what sometimes can happen. You just get too much, and it can carry kicking it with the breeze. Ten-point lead to one thing on the McDonald's gift fan scoreboard, 2-7 to 1-3. So Holmes will do the kicking in again. This time he goes five on. He goes about 45 metres after he runs 10. McGuinness does a sterling job there of protecting Lang, who takes the mark in front, just outside his defensive 50. So he's got plenty of humanity in front of him, all on one half of the ground, basically, and he's just going to have to kick long down the line and hope for the best, and that's exactly what he does. And that might be a little bit too wide, and it's gone... Well, it stayed this side of the fence, thankfully. <laughs> So we'll get the ball back into play fairly rapidly. But we're on world record pace for out of bounds on the full. And it'll be Knowles again, the beneficiary of the kick. So he wastes no time again and kicks the true centre half forward. Egmelessy Smith sets himself underneath it. Spall from behind by Bates brings it to ground. Hard fought footy to be won. And it was Sparks tackled to the ground. And the umpire will come in and toss this one in the air. 55 out directly in front. Blood I've got a bit of a blood rule here. Might be my little man. My little man C-Mac coming off with a bit of... No, Jack Blair, is it? Yeah, coming off with a little bit of claret from the leg. Just while we're waiting for, the, for Blair to come off, Jack Johnson, he's been off the ground now six minutes, so he didn't start the quarter. Uh, he hasn't emer he's just emerged from the coach's box then, so I'm not sure what the move was there because he was their go-to man from kickouts as well. So And he's not going to get on with this blood rule change now. Jack Blair has got blood on his knee. On his knee. And there's, it's not running blood. It's mercurochrome. And, That's all it uh, is. They're going to fix it up, but no running blood. Meanwhile, Too back short. at the ranch, ball up, ball goes down. Egmelessi Smith, hack kick goes nowhere. Johnny McGuinness just punches it forward into space. Isaac Chug runs onto it. He's wrapped up in a big tackle. And you boys keep an eye on the doctoring going on down there. I'll keep an eye on the footy. So Blair doesn't want to get strapped up by the looks of things. The uh, emergency umpire said it's not running, so you should have stayed out there. A little bit of uh, Vaseline on that one and get Jack back out there. So it's sail far side of the ground with the ball. It's a beautiful kick into the breeze. It gets out the back of the contest here, and that's good territory gain. Mark taken by Big Stale. Brad Desson it is. And it's Big Brad Desson. So he now launches the ball into the forward 50. Bodie Walker sits underneath it, well pushing done. forward. Strong mark taken by O'Connor. And O'Connor for Juan Faggy will set things up, and he goes thump with an inside-out mongrel punt kick that goes about 60 metres. Cooper McInnes picks it up pretty cleanly, but he's wrapped up in a tackle instantly. Dumped to the ground, and the umpire trots on in and says, we'll ball this one up. This is the problem, though, now for Jack Blair. They've done nothing to those cuts and everything yeah. else. The emergency umpire's given him the all-clear. Yep. He goes back on. Pete Perillo sees it again. He says, get off, because he doesn't know what the emergency umpire says. The bigger said. problem is he can't, can't get, get back off. on. Yeah, exactly. Big tap down by Bray, and the tackler out there was Lang. Well, both runners are out there. Obviously, they're just telling their charges to get off because they want to get Johnson back on the ground and they want to get Jack Blair onto the ground too. Well, neither Ruckman could get the tap out there. Working hard at ground levels. McNeil, boundary thrown again. Ground on the outer side. Still eight minutes. Jack Johnson still hasn't played any minutes in this third quarter. He's a real barometer of this Magpie side. They trail at the moment by 10 points. One thaggy kicking with the breeze. They've only kicked a couple of points this quarter. Boundary throw in. McGuinness with a tap down at front ground level there. It was Egg Melissi Smith. Shrugs two or three tackles. Get the left boot to ball. Does he keep it in the field of play? No, he can't. And they would have liked a boundary throw in there. Knowles has to go outside of the field of play to get the footy. Halfback flank for the power. 
I'll tell you what I'd like here is Knowles just to switch this footy. Yep. It's absolutely on. They've got three of them lined up. Just switch it, but he doesn't. So he goes another one sideways, inside out, mongrel punt kick. Doesn't get more than three or four metres in the air, but it travels about 45 down the ground. Hack kick forward there by Lang. It'll work. Lux of fortune if you're playing in front, and he was Cody Hennis takes a mark. Just inside the centre square, and he's waiting for blokes to run past him just before he kicks it. So now he kicks long down the line. Bodie Smith, uh, Bodie Walker, not the target, goes out to the centre again, and he takes his second grab in the space of 60 seconds. Another opportunity for an inside 50 here. There's some tired legs out there already. Look at the boys behind the footy not running. So he hacks the ball in. Walker sets himself. Position A. Chug flies. Yeah, give away a free kick to Walker. Front spot. Did all the right things. Yeah, he, he worked He worked really hard then too, Scotty, to get that front position to him. Because the ball's given, being held up, because he worked his way to the front, you could just see the, t the jumper pull as well. But well positioned there by Walker. He's going to be. He's not going to get anywhere near it. Goes short though, Igmalissi Smith just went casual, then took on a couple, got through, handball to Lang, Lang's kick smothered beautifully by Blair, coming the other direction, Sparks, he tried the barrel, it's come off the outside of the boot, does it bounce, it does, Leslie's got to chase it, the wind helps it on its way, Leslie's going to go back to the far side, and McGuinness can take the mark, does he handle over the top to Hudson Holmes, no he doesn't, half back flank now, now he chips Ooh. to Hudson Holmes, he finds him by foot, and didn't gain a great deal of forward meterage, just a little lateral kick there. We've travelled 10 minutes, still no goal. Don't forget, it took 12 minutes in the first quarter, 16 minutes in the second to get a goal. Still haven't got one in the third. Kick goes down the line. Walker can't complete it. Taints grabbed it. Kicked it straight up and down, marking it though was Josh Bates. Not 15 and holding the footy. They didn't like that, the power. Lang will get the free kick. Unlucky on a normal day, that would have gone 30. Yep. It's gone back 20 and now prize called play on. So... Yeah, unlucky there as well, but a great tackle to boot too there by Lang. He's on the outer wing. He's still a long way from home. So will drop short again. Scotty. So Lang gets a hurry up from the umpire, and he does exactly that. He kicks it a little bit too high to get inside the forward 50, and the ball starts to drift backwards. A dead set drifted backwards, taken out of the air there by uh, Patterson, but he can't get clear, and the boundary line will win the argument, and we'll toss this one in 75 around from the sale goal. We've gone 11 minutes, so Sale will be happy with the fact that Juan Faggy haven't managed to score. That's a win for them, and they've had the ball in their forward 50 a couple of times. But Jack Johnson and the Sale boys still can't get on the ground. Jack Blair just about to get on now. So ball gets tossed back in. No one able to get a clearance, and we'll have a secondary stoppage as Blair does come back on, and Dead said, I'll need a surgeon to sew my sides back up if he gets sent off with the blood rule again. <laughs> 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 McGinnis wins a tap down to Egg Molesi Smith. He's held up in a tackle, which is a fair effort in itself. One thing, he gained about 15 metres, but the umpire will come in and toss it in the air again. He wastes no time. The Ruckman forget to jump this time. Ball gets punched out the back. Falls over there towards Hayes. Hayes goes backwards via hands. Finds Tiziani. He goes round the corner. The kick's low and slow. Gets out the back of the contest. Leading back there is uh, in the chase of the balls, Freeman. He rocks and rolls, but he turns it over to a dangerous spot. Sparks has got it 60 from home. Heads goalward. Ball bounces. Ball bounces into the point post, which is an A-grade result for the one faggy power. They'll get a stoppage in their forward 50 as opposed to coughing up possession of the ball. Speaking of A-grade, got an update in the A-grade netball, and there's all thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture. Bensdale progress, bit of an upset there. 56, defeating Tarogan 38. So the Red Legs, after a tough last season, go through with the stoppage kick around the body. He likes it off the boot. One thaggy get the all-important first goal, and it goes to our man, Kay Patterson. I think it's Patterson. It is. What a great goal from the stoppage. And it was Locked fantastic. Up. It wasn't defended very well there by Sale, too. He had enough, he had enough space uh, from that throw in there, too, behind the play. So it was a bit sloppy there by Sale. Not being quick enough to, aware, uh, to be aware of what he was doing. And uh, it was a great finish. The snap was high. The wind could have actually carried it, but it uh, went through the middle, what, exactly what one thaggy needed. Out to a 16-point lead now, the one thaggy power at the 13-minute mark of this third quarter. The McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard has one thaggy 3-7-25, leading sale 1-3-9. Just got to hold strong now, the Magpies. They've got to be in it at three-quarter time, you suspect, if the next goal is all important, if there is one. And back to the middle they go. McLaren head over the footy, winning it and coming off the line there was Hayes. Jack Johnson throwing himself in the middle here too, Daryl. After being the first 12 and a half minutes, 13 minutes on the bench and McLaren gets up holding a wrist. 
An arm, a hole, a shoulder, you name it. Jonty McGuinness with a tap down. Jack Blair kicks around his body. Inside forward 50. Dangerous spot. Leslie got one off the shoulder. Hands there from Patterson was to Gilmore. And they wrap him up. So what Will Leslie's done now too, he's made himself the free man just from a matchup point of view. Hudson Holmes has had to go uh, to Patterson. McLaren comes off holding the left wrist. Jared Blair attacked it at pace. Got tacked, uh, tackled straight away. Long enough to have prior opportunity, according to the umpire, who's paid the free kick. Fair enough, too, I thought. He did roll through it. And a little bit of push me, shove you down there. The, the little bro sticking up for the little bro. <laughs> now, Holmes can come to the near side if he wants. Paddy Tainch is there. He's not even going to look. Would have been a dangerous kick, but he goes to the outer side and can't quite get it to Brad Desson. Campbell tried to keep it in and couldn't do so. Another boundary throwing out of side. I'd be fascinated to know whether Tange actually called for that footy or just said, don't worry about it. Mm. I don't mind him doing that if you're going to drag a couple of players away just to open it up. But uh, that's, what I think, the only reason why you would do it. McGuinness with a big tap. Gains of the good metre each. Can someone run onto this for the sale magpies? It was, and it was Leslie who gave it to Campbell. Kick around, down the line it goes. Fergus O'Connor all on his own back there. Uncontested mark, and he's going to kick it back where it came from. But with a little bit further vigour and distance, it cleared the intended target sparks by about 15 and went over the boundary line. So we've seen Sale do this in the first quarter as well when the ball's in their defensive 50. All numbers stream forward except for Jack Leslie who'll cover the middle of the ground. But he's got four to cover. So the ball comes out quick enough. He's, uh, it's just going to bounce straight back into one Thaggy's forward line. Ball gets out the back of the ruck contest. No one able to take it cleanly initially. The big man Bray gets in there at ground level. Great work. Kicks a barrel into the forward 50. The boys come charging out at full chested. No one can take the mark. Ball at ground level. Quick handball out the back finds Williams. Williams goes one more handball to a teammate who's wrapped up in a tackle. And the umpire's got no choice but to say, Patterson, Ooh. you've already kicked one goal. You're not getting another one. Although, watch this space. The umpire charges in. He's not going to reverse it. I thought he might have come in for the reversal there, but no. Sale will maintain possession. And it'll be Holmes with the footy. Familiar territory for him. Defensive 50, kicking the ball far side. And ball gets out the back of the contest here to Egg Molesi Smith. He flicks a little handball up there to his teammate in Leslie. Leslie goes Good inside. Kick. And they've got the ball in Egg Molesi Smith's oh. hands again. Now it comes down to Tange. He kicks the ball into the forward 50. A little bit too much on that one. It gets over the back of the contest. Ball at ground level to be one. Tiziani goes in. Pops a little handball up over the top here. And they find a little bit of space through Lindsay. Comes back through the middle of the ground through Chug and uh, Chug's got kick. three power players on their own in the middle the big Ruckman storms on after it beautiful little tap on back over his head and that'll allow Dickinson to run onto the footy and they're off here through T-Mac McMillan comes back inside to Dickinson Dickinson now steadies oh. ball he's just picked that up like they're playing packs at school no one able to take the mark ball hits the deck and Sale will win at the ground level Gilmore though bursts through the pack picks it up and goes the outside of the boot for a minor score Taking one thank you to a 17-point lead now, and we've played just on 17 minutes of the third quarter. 3-8-26 to sail, 1-3-9, McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. Well, we said in the pre-game that wouldn't be surprised if four goals wins it. Uh, one thank you on three, sail if that's the case, they've got a bit of work to do. They are coming home with the breeze, but they'd love one against the breeze. No one's been able to kick one towards the city end of the ground. And Holmes goes to that far side again. The target is big Brad Desson. Can't complete the mark because Bray was there. Gathers it and then runs away. He gave it straight to Shannon Lang, though. And that's the opposition. Kicks towards Jack Leslie. First time we've really seen him have a crack. And he had a soccery off the ground as Jacob Thomas grabs it, barrels it back in. Point of the square. Hudson Holmes takes the mark. He's got one on the knee. He's got two on the near side. Is he going to come? He does. Has a bounce. It's the best way to get out of it. Has two bounces. Will handball with the draw. Doesn't matter if you miss the target. Hall was there. Hutchins is there as well. They're going to handball it again or kick down the line. And the kick's down the line. Does it get out the back? Working hard is McDonald and Jack Johnson on chug. And the umpire says ball up. Good result for the Magpies. It's on the attacking side. It's all about risk now. They've got to take their chances, Sale. They've been playing 18 minutes. They haven't kicked the goal this quarter either. They've got to gain yards. And that's the first part of that puzzle they've just done now. So the ball goes up, McGinnis gets high and taps it down. They go through hands again, but they're unable to get a clear little hat kick forward there by Josh Bates, and the ball will trickle over the boundary line just in front of the oh. <laughs> coach's box here for one Faggy. We've got a boundary throw in. Johnny McGinnis is cramped, so somewhat Jack Johnson will take the ruck duties. 
Early doors to be cramping. As rucked unchanged for nearly three quarters, but he's going to have a long fourth quarter ahead of him if he's cramped already. So it'll be Johnson to go up against Bray, and McGuinness is going to come to the bench. Egmolesi Smith will take his spot. Sweep him, Sweep him. So the ball will get out the back of the contest here, you would suspect it does. Blair wins it, flicks a little handball forward, picked up by Lang. He's tossed to the ground. Umpire says all fair in love and war. Play on. Now Blair, the opposite brother, kicks across to face a goal. Heading out there in the chase for the footy is Williams. The ball eludes him and goes out of bounds for a throw in far side of the ground. We tick over the 19-minute mark. Sailor doing well to grip on here. And we'll toss this one back into play about 25-30 around from the Wonthaggy goal. They lead 26 to 9 in a low-scoring game. And the umpire is going to get a second crack at that toss. Didn't quite find the tall blokes. And the central umpire said, have another go. So that's exactly what we'll do. So it goes back into play. To all the little ruckmen out there, do the work. Egg Melissa Smith taken by Gilmore. Can't get clear. Now he's in trouble. And now he's sat on top of the footy. And that's a crucial free kick to go to Jai Gilmore. 35-40 out. Almost directly in front, advantage side, if he kicks towards the right goalpost, Daryl. Yeah, it's a gettable one, this one, because Definitely. the breeze is blowing in that sort of direction. So he's he'll be able to sort of start it just inside the right goalpost is where you need to start it, I think. So he'll kick this from about 40. Distance would normally not be a problem. He starts his run up about 60. Kick on its way. Off the side of the boot. He'll call it a pass, I'm sure, if someone marks it, but it was a complete and utter stinker. He actually gets his own footy. <laughs> he gets his own footy rugby union style. Now, the ball ends up in the hands of Thomas McMillan. He gets dangerous, gets the ball towards the top of the square. Handball oh. back to McMillan. He goes back to the Blair. Blair goes two at top of the square. McGinnis can't take the mark. Ball lands with Gilmore. Gilmore gets round one. Gilmore oh, gets please. around two, but he can't get around the third one. An umpire Perillo says, have a free kick. Yeah. And if you want to call me nasty names... The free kick comes with a 50, and that's huge for Sale now because they'll get the ball just short of centre, and they are under siege. So Hudson Holmes right in the centre square of the Bairnsdale City Oval. They trail by 17 at the moment, and they must either get one or hold one thaggy. They can't afford a score late in this quarter. 21-minute mark. Big moment all thanks to Metricom Holmes. Start your building in just 16 weeks. Contact Metricon today as Lang's kick to the outer side. No numbers out there except for the power. And that was Sparks. Little dribbler kick didn't go too far. Egg Malesi Smith overruns it. A quick handball by McNeil. They go forward again to the power towards the pocket. The kick goes. And we'll have another boundary throw in. Just glad the one thaggy forward's got to be making Hudson Holmes a bit more accountable as well. Just watching the ball go inside 50. He's on his own. McGuinness has to push up and, and make a two on one regardless of what happens there. So we can get the ball to ground rather than Hudson Holmes marking everything that comes in. 11 disposals this quarter, Hudson Holmes box. Inside 50s. It's 11 to one taggy There we go. Big punch out there from Will Leslie. Clears the defensive area. Campbell comes the other direction. Johnson tried to shrug a tackle. Got spun around in the tackle. Got a handball away. Oh, it looked like he went to blow the whistle of holding the ball, but it come out at the end, and now we've got another boundary throw-in. Scott, a quick uh, update uh, in the Mid-Gippsland Football League. Thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture, Gippsland Foster, 48. They lead Newborough, 29. Loser goes home there, Box. They do, mate. Uh, Foster looks like they've got good control there at the moment. So the ball gets tossed back into play. Break tried to grab it out of the ruck, but wasn't able to break free. And we'll have a, another stoppage just outside the forward 50 for one thaggy. Far side of the ground, 22 and a half gone. They lead 26 to 9. Ball gets thrown up outside the forward 50, ends up inside the forward 50. Shannon Lang picks it up for sale and just hacks it forward looking for territory. And a stoppage on centre wing will do them very, very nicely. And it's Knowles who comes in and lays the big tackle. And they secure the ball on the centre wing. Umpire tosses it up. Johnson beaten to it by Bray. Ball gets out the back of the contest. McDonald gets his head over the footy, wins it, turns around and kicks up there towards centre wing. Flying high was uh, McMillan, but he couldn't complete the mark. Out of bounds, Darrell. So how interesting is this? Obviously, John Dee McGinnis has come up with a cramp. Uh, Jack Leslie still stays forward, kicking into the breeze uh, for the Magpie. So clearly, clearly something the issue. Allowing the coach, Jack Johnson, to do the ruck duties. He might have won himself a free kick there, but he didn't in the end. And the umpire said play on. And Bray says, well, I'll pick it up. I'll kick it down inside our forward 50. But Leslie, that's Will Variety, wins it. Trying to get a handball to Hutchins. Left it behind. 
Ball now still in dispute, close to the boundary line. Hutchins will go again. He wants to go around and try to get it back on the right boot. He was running in the wrong direction. Lang dropped the mark that he probably normally All takes, right. and a quick oh. kick's going to land in the hand of Patterson. And Patterson will have another shot on goal. He's been the only goal kicker in this quarter. And he's going to have another shot at it. And this one... You know what, as much as I don't like him... I'm sorry, he's played on. 30 metres out, has a shot. It's a helicopter drop punt. It started to the right goal post and drifted across for a minor score. Well, I'm taking out 3-9-27, an 18-point lead over Sale, who are stuck on their half-time score of 1-3-9. McDonald's gives Lance scoreboard 24 minutes played third quarter. And Holmes teasing with the idea yeah. of coming this side. <laughs> One thing he teased him as well to, uh, yeah. to tempt him to go there. And he doesn't. He goes plan A. Well, it's not plan A really when you kick it to the opposition ruck. When a big Bray goes back and takes another clunker. He's got McGuinness for company again. He's come back onto the ground after they've rubbed that cramp out. Now Bray kicks to a really dangerous spot. 20 out directly in front of goal. The big boys fly. No one can take it in the air. Gilmore at ground level. Snaps around the corner. Oh, and he's brought it back too far. And it goes through for a minor score only. That would have been huge. That could have nearly been a clincher. Yep. That would have been it. 310, 28, 1D. Now a 19 point lead on sale. 139. McDonald's gives Lance scoreboard 25 minute mark of the third quarter. They've got to get one. Sale just have to get one against the breeze, which is near impossible. You've got to attack. You've got to attack it. So Hudson Holmes has to play on here, and he has to get this ball out of the defensive 50. Well, he plays on, and he does get it out defensive 50, but Boxer, he's gone to the outer side again. Knowles will do the big spoil. Bray's there to help him out. Out the back there was Dickerson. A forward handball to a teammate in McMillan. He got shoved over the boundary line, and we'll have a boundary thrown in the outer side. And the Jack Leslie injury is so cru crucial now to Sale. You can see what's happened, because Bray has dominated this quarter at the moment. He has, he has intercepted everything at every kick out so far. So this time McGuinness grabs it out of the ruck, but just gives it straight to Sparks. Gives a handball inboard. And the kick now from Bates goes high. Inside forward 50. Gilmore with a bit of body strength. Can't complete the mark. They dive on top of it again, the power. They try and lock it in and get the stoppage. They do just that. A bit more poise around the footy at the moment, the Wonthaggy boys. Sale just getting rid of the ball. Yep. Wonthaggy trying to use it to advantage. Forward 50 stoppage here again for the power. McGuinness gets a tap out, goes only as far as Gilmore. A little tap on over the top there. Tries to find and does find in the end. Sparks, Sparks snap on goal. Goes down towards the forward 50, touched. And will go out of bounds as Jackson Williams sees it over the boundary for a throw in. Hard up against the point post with only a couple of minutes to go. Late goal here would be huge box. It would be too. Uh, I just heard the uh, timekeeper say five minutes. Four. <laughs> Make up takes it out of the ruck, gets a handball off there oh. with the teammate in Sparks. And the best man on the ground kicks the best goal of the day. And that is absolutely a Zambrero's goal of the day candidates. Yeah, it's a great finish then too. Just uh, reward for effort too there as we uh, play a little Mexican jingle in the background. Uh, Sparks has been in everything else as well. And again, they caught, got, got exposed again, Sale, from the back end of that stoppage. They just didn't protect the area. Sparks was good enough to land on it and uh, snap over his shoulder. It was a great goal and a great finish. And both goals have come from stoppages in this quarter for Wonthaggy and it takes them out to a 25-point lead. And McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard there, 14-34, leading sale at 139. Hey, don't forget the new quarter powder range at Macca's. It's the icon Ooh. you love with a little extra flair. I don't know what we're going to do after Hop this. in on your way home as the umpire gets us back underway. Bray with a tap down again. McGuinness had to rove. Give a handball off to McLaren. Forward handball, though, coughed it up. McMillan grabs it, and now he'll kick it to centre-half forward. One-on-one -on -one little battle. McNeil was there as well. Couldn't quite complete it. Head over there was Taint. Try to squeeze the handball out. Sorry, Campbell. And now they crash back in. Bates and Blair. Blair decides to pick it up. Kick it inside. Hudson Holmes at the sit. Chess Mark was there. He dropped it. Ball now in dispute. A quick handball out from Geordie Desson and gave it to the teammate in Hutchins, but he drilled it straight down the throat of Isaac Chug. Chug will turn and have a bit of a look. Williams present, presents and goes, that's where I want it. And Hug, Chug goes the other direction towards Cooper McGuinness. Leslie will spoil it over for a boundary throw in. 28 minutes gone into the third quarter for McDonald's. And the margins at a game high, 25 in favour of Wonthaggy. It's just about enough, you sense. So thrown back in, Wonthaggy forward 50 again. McInnes gets front position. McInnes at ground level. They need to change names. McInnes, McGuinness. <laughs> There's too many Macs. Throwing a couple of McMillans. We'll have to go to Macca's. And a Macca's for one of those quarter pandas they were talking about, Box. You better yep. believe it. 
And McInnes gets a tap down. Hack kick goes out of the forward 50 there by McLaren. Gets over the top of the contest and they'll be happy with the boundary line. And we'll ball this one in about 70 around from the one faggy goal. Sale simply can't cough up another score. Cannot cough up another score in the last couple of minutes of play here. Right, I probably, probably have more players behind the footy if I was in charge. Right. Wind's been a real flattener over this weekend, hasn't it? It really has. It, yep. it does deflate. It deflates everything. The, the supporters, the players, and everything else that goes with it. Barks from the stoppage, handled over the top. He looked for Blair, couldn't quite get it. McLaren kicks around the body. Bodie Walker oh. over the <laughs> shoulder handball. And over the top there was Egg Malesi smith Here's Jack Leslie. First touch of the afternoon to handball. Goes back towards Tainch. Inboard kick to Bodie Walker. Couldn't complete the mark. Shrugged the tackle. Gave it to Lang. Lang handballed forward. Play on to the umpire. Bray got it. He gave it out the back. Quick one to Schultz. And he'll barrel it back down to half forward where the ball spent the majority of the day. Oh. And good tackle to number threes. Oh. Holmes and Holmes. Not paid. Play on the advantage. Sparks kicks around his body. Cooper McGuinness grabs it. Works his opponent out. Hambles over the top. Williams. Will Leslie. Strong tackle. Holding the ball. Will Leslie saves the goal. And that would have been the sealer. Too uh, unselfish. Incredibly. The closing speed of Will Leslie, we've seen it years on years. He just proved it again how quick he can be. So now the kick goes outside, forward 50, finds turf. Picked up down there by Descent. He flicks a handball out when he probably should have kept it in. One thaggy favourite at ground level here, you would suspect, and they win it. They go forward through Blair. He's going to go to the top of the square. No, he's going to go inside the forward 50. Umpires kick. found a free kick off the footy and paid oh. advantage. Is it going to be a goal? He's paid advantage. It went through from behind. I reckon it's gone through for a minor score. Oh, so that counts. That was Shannon Bray again, too. So he's had a, a huge third quarter. Uh, that was a free kick off the ball to Jared Blair. So I'm not sure what's happened here. There's a little bit of confusion. A behind the given. Yep. It is now. Yep. 4 11 35, one tag. 26 point lead over sale. 1 3 9, McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. Holmes again. Repeat this. We've said it a hundred times this afternoon. Kicks to the outer side. Big fly over the back. Leslie couldn't complete the mark. Getting involved. McMillan was there. Handball was partially smothered. Sparks tries to run onto it. And now somehow Sale get it through. Walker crashes oh. through. Got a couple of handballs in board. One of those is Campbell. He little toe poke came off the shin at the end of the day. Bray goes to ground. Ball in dispute. And they dive on top of it again. Campbell can't get a hold of it. I reckon his left foot might just be forgetting on buses, Daryl. That yep. uh, did not look real comfortable at all. <laughs> Is that the first foot or the second one that goes on? I use my right foot to get up. Well, yeah. you haven't been on a bus in your life, Box. <laughs> Ball gets out the back here. One thaggy power go forward late through Sparks. He goes up in the McInnes direction. He flies from behind. Ball comes to ground. Picked up down here by Hayes. He gets one hand to tackle. Breaks free of that. Ball comes in here towards Aiden Lindsay. He rocks and rolls. Ball spills out the back to Gilmore. He's got a little bit of time. They come back here to Hayes. Hayes goes goalward bound. In the goal square. Oh. Could have taken the mark. Ball gets over the top of his head and it'll go out of bounds. It was Jackson Williams who had the opportunity and the ball in fact stays in. Sale win it. They try to find the boundary line but they don't. It finds Blair. Blair goes to the top Great of the square. Kick. Gilmore by himself. With 20 seconds left to go in the third quarter, he can go back and ice this one. 20 metres out directly in front. Any other day of the week, you'd say this is 100%. Today, it's probably about a 90% from here, Box. That's an easy one. Can, can I just say, I'm not a big fan of the big banana kick they do in the AFL, and some players are doing it in the Gippsland League as well. This is not probably an opportunity to do that as well, because you can get a bit more control uh, with the banana kick. What do you think? Not a chance. Sorry about the sound. Gilmore comes in, slidish angle, Bree's the only thing he's got to deal with. 25 metres out, and oh no. he sprayed it off oh the no. right-hand side and put it through for a minor score right on the siren, Paul Carter. 4-12, 36, have kicked one goal, uh, two goals, seven for that quarter. They lead by 27 points on sale, who stay on their th uh, half-time score. 1-3-9, and that's all on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. It is a game-high 27 points. The Magpies are going to have to pull a rabbit out of a hat to get out of this one. The loser goes home in this elimination final. We've got one to go. It is Gippsland Live on TRFM. Thanks to our good friends at Harvey Norman Electrical. It's time for this week's Gippsland League Top 5. Let's go. Kicking us off at number one, Derek Egmolesi smith here from Sale. He had to think quick. He was front and centre, got it over his head, and a great goal.
Number two, this one's an absolute peach. Cade Reuters here from Terralgan. This is tough. He's right on the boundary line. How does he do that? That is one of the best you'll see. Goal of the day, winner. You are not a contender, it's the winner. You are kidding me, Timmy. That is one of the best we have seen all year. From Number three, it's Blair Roscoe here from Terralgan. Beautiful little pick up this, but even better evading his opponent. Then he just goes bang, lines it up, puts it home. Oh, the youngsters put it through. Good. How good is this great game of AFL? This is unreal. And he's on the wrong side there too for a left footer. That could have gone anywhere. Number four here, Jared Stewart here on the throw in from Leon Gather. He just takes off. He says, catch me if you can, I'm putting it through. Number five, it's Liam Masters here from Moe. He just gets the hand pass right on the paint of 50, bangs it home. Uh, yes, it is the final countdown. Three quarter time. It was all one thaggy in the quarter. Four goals, 12, if you don't mind, for three quarters. 36 are on, and Sale didn't kick a score in that one. 139, 27 point margin. It's a game high at the moment, and it's all in front of the Magpies, who are kicking with the breeze, but they've only managed one three for the day. So it's hard to see them coming back from here. Paul Carter's got all the key stats, all thanks to Gippsland Suzuki. Inside 50 is heavily one thaggy's way, 20 to 2. Clearances, one thaggy, 17 7 in that, that quarter. Uh, the centre clearances, one thaggy, 2 to 1. Three kicks in the third quarter went 7 5 sales way. Uh, not many marks are taken, 12 to sale, 10 to one thaggy. Uh, the Ruckman, we had 12 hit outs to Shannon Bray. He has 34 to 3 quarter time. 10 more to Johnny McGuinness, he's on 45. Individually, Ryan Sparks, another 10 disposals. He's sitting on 34 at three quarter time. Uh, Jack Blair's on 20 for sale. Leading stat winner of the ones we are following is Hudson Holmes. He had 14 that, that, that quarter for a total of 28. 27, Shannon Lang. Uh, 16, Derek Egmalusi Smith. Thank you very much, Paul Carter. Of course, what do you say, boxer, at uh, three quarter time if you're the Magpies? Uh, you've got to throw everything at it now. It's, it's do or die, I suppose. What players is do you want to lift? You uh, spoke about some of the key players. Yeah. For players. Who do you want to lift? Who do you want? Cody Hennis is the number one target for me. Like, get him on the ball, get him winning the ball, because right now he's delivered absolutely jack poo. So he needs to make there's, sure that... Uh, there's plenty of those out there. But today. there's a few of them too as well. But Cody's been out of sorts uh, for a few weeks now too. So big moments for big players, and this is the opportunity for him to step up and say, right, oh, it's time. 
but you know you throw everything at it now. Do you match the uh, seven defenders? It uh, looks like uh, Will Leslie. Yep, fair enough. Too. Is going to go and match it with Chug as well. So it's a good call there by the the Maggies, and they're just going to go head to head, and this is their chance right now. So. Uh, if I'm Jack Johnson, I have to be the biggest salesman in the world and say we've still got a chance to win it because yep. they have to have the belief that they can actually win it. So these sort of players, like Jack Johnson, the coach as well, he has to put his hand up and say, righto, it's stand and deliver time and take nothing, uh, don't leave anything out in the, in the park. What are you smiling at then? Scotty wanted to say something. Couldn't get a word in with the uh, big boxer. Bray taps it down. Sorry about that, Scotty. No, I'll take a chance now, Box. You can have a think about this. Does one Thaggy throw another defender back and get a Lucy down there and make it eight on seven? Yeah, not why yet. not? I would. Why not? Blair was there. Head over it. Gave it to Bray. Gave it a quick one now to Patterson. His high kick goes to half forward. The power look to go forward, though. And they do. Here's Lindsay. Got a bit of space in front of Geordie Desson. Right foot kick. Inside they go. One on one. Hutchins can't complete the mark. McGinnis left it for his teammate in Patterson. And all of a sudden, in a dangerous spot, the Magpies can't afford to give one up into the breeze so early in this final quarter. McGinnis tapped it down. Sparks hit it at pace. Got a forward handball. The soccer off the ground. Incoming. Leslie. One way, two way. There it is. And the first goal of the final quarter into the breeze. And the first goal up to the city end this afternoon goes to Aidan Lindsay, the experienced campaigner. Uh, sorry, Magpie supporters uh, that are out there listening, but they're done. Stick a fork in them. I think uh, kicking a goal against the flow now is really going to deflate the air. Uh, the absolute bejeebas are out of sale right now. And uh, one of those goals, the first goal, I think the first goal kicked in two games at that end of the ground. So to have it, you know, they played ugly footy getting it inside and they got the goal even uglier. So there you go. It's a 33-point lead on the Harvey Norman computer scoreboard to Wontaggy at the one-minute mark of the final quarter. 5-12-42. Sale still at half-time score of 1-3-9. So back in the middle we go where it's Bray up against McGuinness. McGuinness will give that one too, but they can't get the clearance as it comes out to Patterson. Patterson again kicking the ball up to the half-forward line. Pitches in front of Blair. Can't take it cleanly. Ball and then comes back to Tiziani. He goes around the corner with a big torp. The boys at the bar all love the big torp into the forward 50, but it bounces back out as quickly as it goes in. Foot race here. <laughs> it's, gone <Bates>. backwards. <laughs> it's gone backwards, that footy. Bates gets back to it first for Juan Faggy. Pops a little handball over the top there to Sparks. Why not? He needs another touch. Sparks kicks the ball in low and hard, but it ricochets off the sale player's foot out of bounds. The only surprise there is it can go out of bounds on the full the day sale are having, and Sparks gets a free kick. But what about Tiziani's kick? He was on the half-forward flank on this side, kicked it inside forward 50, dribbled backwards, and ended up on the wing on the far side. Another inside-outside 50. That's it. Two of those today. Yep. So we'll toss this one back into play. Far side of the ground. Bray getting on top of McGuinness the longer this game goes. Wins the tap down, but they can't get the clearance. And there's a heap of humanity around this one. It'll take something special to get through the 15, 16 players that are around this footy. And McGinnis says, let's do it my way. Grabs it out of the ruck and then hacks it forward. Ball lands in front of Lang. He can't quite get there. Truck goes in low and hard. And the umpire says, come in, we'll toss this one up. I tell you what, there must be a few fathers out there having a few Father's Day drinks because one bloke just asked me, it looks like the wind's died down there at Bansdale. <laughs> he goes, oh, sorry, watching the wrong game. <laughs> what the? McGinnis with the tap down, got over the back. Johnson was there, wrapped up by a Gilmore tackle. Uh, Connor, even. Both with the... Uh, Lacking a little bit of uh, hair up top. Their own choice, of course. Little tap out there from Bray. O'Connor got held. Sparks first to the footy. Yeah. Wrapped up in a tackle. And wouldn't it be nice to have that choice? Yes, true. Around the ground scores, Boxer. All yeah. thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture. Yeah, Foster, 7 8 48. They lead Newborough, 4 12 36. So we've got a close one there. Woodside, 7 8 50 to Hayfield, 2 5 17. Egg Malesi Smith with absolute strength. Then got a handball to McLaren. High kick and wide kick. Stays in the field of play, though. Uh, come off the shoe of Campbell. Uh, trickled over the line for a boundary throw. The margin at 33 points all of a sudden. Well, Sale have only managed one goal three. The first goal into the breeze all afternoon. Has gone to Aidan Lindsay inside the first minute of this final quarter for Harvey Norman Computers. So the ball's tossed back into play. Sale scoring in. McInnes goes backwards to go forward, but it favours... The one Thaggy power side initially. Patterson turns it over, though, in a dangerous spot. Ball now ricochets back, and one Thaggy will go up towards the wing through Bates. Ball sits in the air. Probably high contact there, you would suspect. And Friedman will take the free kick. No, it's gone against him. No, it has gone to Friedman. Umpire Malone says, righto, your ball, Freeman. Let's play on. 
And he kicks it to the dangerous area about 45 out. And leading out in front, the big man's ascent who's been good when he's been given limited opportunities. And 50, oh no, sorry, just come back a little bit. He can kick this. He definitely can, Scud. And uh, he's probably probably going to be right in the middle of the ground. He's just had to get a little bit of distance so he can get a little bit more. Drop punt or banana. Yeah, drop punt, <laughs> this one. So <laughs> 47 out Keep going. in front. <laughs> and I'm going to need a ride home from Bansdale. <laughs> Descent to give Sale any chance whatsoever. He's going to have to go right-hand goalpost, and he'll kick from right on the 50. He goes thump. He goes right-hand goalpost. The breeze does nothing. It does absolutely nothing, and the ball hangs out there and goes through for a minor score only. Their first score in quite some time. First score since the second quarter, Scotty. They go to one four ten 10 on the Harvey Norman computer scoreboard. Trailing one thank you by 32 points. The power at 5 12, 42, and we've played five minutes in the final quarter. Fergus O'Connor looks to the near side. The grandstand side says no. I'm going to follow Hudson Holmes' lead from that third quarter. Kick it to the outer side. Target out there is Cooper McGuinness. Can't complete it. And over it goes. Boundary throw in. Isn't it funny when you're playing from fullback, you can actually run as far as you like? Yep. You just run 25 metres. The umpire never tells you you run too far. Never seen it at all. Interesting thing. Most of your scores normally come from turnovers. One thing you've kicked 4-1 from stoppages today. Yep. They work hard from that stoppage. Ground level again over the back was McGuinness. Quick kick by Sparks. Got it going forward. Cooper McGuinness does well. Taps it over the top. And now Aidan Lindsay and Jordy Descent go at it. The two old-timers, experienced campaigners they are. Freeman kicks around the body for the Magpies. Tried to clear the area. Attacking it hard. And strong tackle from Blair. Was on, was it on Hutchins? I think it was. Jake Hutchins. You don't get out of a Blair tackle. And we've got a ball up in the middle of the ground. Six and a half minutes into the final quarter. McGuinness again, big thump forward. Tries to get Leslie to run onto it. Gilmore will stand and wait and knew the tackle was coming. And he'll take the pressure and have a stoppage. Scott, I've got a couple more games here to go through as well. In the Allen Bank District League, near him south, he finished second. 6-6-42, uh, they trail along Worry 10-10-70 at three-quarter time. So one thing, he win this ball forward from the stoppage. No one able to get a clear possession. They just roll it forward, rugby union style. And in the West Queensland Football League, Nano Goon 8 14 62. They lead Inverloch 8 7 55. Close one there. So far side of the ground, centre wing, McGuinness versus Bray. McGuinness wins it again, hacks the ball forward. Ball putrid bounce there for Paul Jack Johnson, goes straight over his bonds. He doubles back and lays a tackle. But any other day, you think that ball would have just bounced straight into his hands and they would have been off to the races. But today's just not the day for those in black and white. It bounced straight over his head and then bounced sideways. And we'll have another stoppage, forward flank. Another chance for McGuinness to get his hand on it. He stays down this time and wins the clearance at ground level. Pops a handball out looking for Lang, but it's cut off there by Sparks again. Sparks turns the ball over on centre wing. The kick from Freeman goes up and down <laughs> and wide and out of bounds on the full. And it'll be a free kick to Chug, far side of the ground, Was once that? we retrieve the footy. I was like, Chug's been involved a lot today, but stats sort of don't indicate the type of game he's had, Paul. No, just the nine at, the, at this stage. Certainly been involved, though. Most of his work's up in the back line against Salvo. So. Yeah, it is. Left foot kick up and kicks it towards the wing. It drops as expected. Sparks taps it down, tried to get someone to run onto that one. Jared Blair was out the back, took on a couple. They crunch into him, too. And over it goes, boundary throw. And this might get a little bit willing, too, in this last quarter, I would suspect. It definitely will, too, Scott. And I think the recovery now, they're only going to get the six-day break, one thaggy, uh, if they get over the line here, which they, they will. Uh, it's the, the recovery is going to be the critical part for them. So in the front spot, there was Bray. Whistle goes. Looks like if we want to avoid the traffic, we'll stay to the end, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few that are starting to leave now. Another boundary throw, and it just dropped a little bit short. So we're going to do it again. McGinnis and Bray, as they have done all afternoon. Bray over the back will thump it forward, tries to get Hayes to run onto it. Although out there was Will Leslie and Sparks said, get out. There's one little insight I can give you too, Scotty, because you weren't here when I did make this comment a few years back, that it is the longest trip from one thaggy to here in country football, Victoria. So they had to be challenged, and I did win. Well done, Nick. Oh, thanks, Daryl. Only thing you got right in 20 years of broadcast. Shannon Lang handles over the top to Hutchins. A bit of a forward run now. Back to Lang. Lang's right foot kick. He's got the distance. It might even bounce. Oh, no. Well done by Schultz. Last line of defence. That was on line two for a 70-metre Zambrero goal at a contender. And Schultz said, you're not having one tonight. Now he gets to play on. Runs to the outer side. High kick. It's going to clear the pack, although Freeman read it better. 
There's a whistle gone. It's going to go Freeman's way. Or it might even be a, a Off free kick. Yeah, yeah, it's Will got to go to Will Leslie for just a, a block. So Will Leslie, 60 metres out, wants to come in board. Got told to push back behind your mark. And now we can start things. Just ticked over nine and a half minutes. Montaggy haven't got a goal since the 16-minute mark of the, third, of the second quarter. The high kick, big pack form, out the back. Schultz is there. Did anyone touch it? Tiziani said, that doesn't matter anyway. I'm going to rush it through, minor score. So we'll go to 1-5-11. They're now trailing by 31 points on Wontaggy, who are 5-12-42. Harvey Norman, computer scoreboard, 10 minutes played, final quarter. So it'll be Knowles of Wontaggy to bring it in, and it won't take any guesses to see where he's going. He plays on, runs his full complement of 50, and then kicks it another 40, and it ends up 25 out from goal, basically, when the wind blows it back in. But in all seriousness, it's gone just outside the 50 for a throw-in for about the 812th time today. So the boundary umpire over there has done an outstanding job. Well, we'll have Ernie's Mars Bar and Canna Coke today. <laughs> Sunday, they get a double. They get double. Oh, day, two double Mars Bars. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a beautiful flick in. Bray in the right position brings it down. Lang and Sparks go at it. No one able to get it clear. And umpire Malone trots on in. It's a very pretty canter he has, I reckon, Buddha Malone. Very pretty canter, the way he runs. I think it's a bit, bit dressage. Oh, canter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Up and down the throw goes. Comes out towards Sparks, boundary line beats him. It's the only thing that's beaten him all day. Bit of a horse trot, do you think? Yeah, just looks yeah, like right. a little dressage light. Okay, okay, thanks for that. So we've got another boundary throw in. I'll have a go, Scotty. 11 minutes into the final quarter. Harvey Norman Computers, if you've forgotten Father's Day, it's probably too late to get there, but you can still go during the week. As the tap down comes from Bray, Igmelissi Smith tried to get through. Here's Hennis receiving the footy. Left foot kick. Top of the square it goes. It's going to clear the pack. Brad Desson's oh. there. He got his ball to boot in midair. A la ballerina style. I don't think Brad Desson's ever been compared to a ballerina. He got ball to boot, though. It went through for another minor score. 1 6 12 sale, trailing one thing. who are 5 12 42. Harvey Norman computer score with 11 and a half played, final quarter. So Knowles brings it in. Surprise, surprise, he goes far side where a pack forms. Big Fist comes over the back trying to get it back in the forward 50 for sale. Stacks on the mill and the umpire trots on in and says, we'll ball this one up. Lowest score in uh, an elimination finals, 4-9-33 by Druin in 2019. I reckon we've got that covered today. Tough afternoon. Bray with a little backhander puts it down there in Blair's path. Unable to take it clear. Stoppage again. 55 from the sale goal. McInnes gets a tap on this one. Lang at ground level, can't win it. Blair picks it up and hacks it forward. Sparks, sorry. And that one goes out of bounds on the full free kick. Are we going the way of Kai McDonald of Sale? No, Jared Freeman, you reckon? Uh, he just sort of pushed across and got it last minute, Scotty. Cheat. So he goes thump the centre half forward. Sitting underneath, it's Hennis. Oh, good grab. Chug comes from behind, takes a big grab. He has read it very He's well. How very many marks well. today? He has read it well, Ch Chug. Uh, just, I've only got down six at the moment. There's six very good marks. His kick goes 40 up and 40 down. Lands in the chest there, though, of Hudson Holmes, who's come right up the ground. Haven't been a lot of marks paid today, mainly due to the wind. And then, funny that, because yesterday, I reckon that was the difference. Moe's tools... And their marking prowess got over the top of Tarogan. So interesting, two similar conditions. And there hasn't been too many marks at all from these two sides. Home goes with a little under descent. And he kicks it in much longer. Gets out the back of the contest. Marks taken down there, though, by Tim Knowles. Been resolute in the last quarter. Shannon Bray, in fact. Lovely pass out by him. Mark taken. Could be Sparks again there. Rolling around a little bit down there. Is it cramp? Yeah, it's nothing. Sparks. Nothing untoward. So Sparks has it, defensive 50, 13 and a half minutes. It's been a tough afternoon. Sparks is 40th disposal. Kicks high, that's going to be out of bounds in the full, you would have thought, yep. Not one of his best. Actually, good mark out there by the guy 15 rows deep. I think Shannon Bray outside of Sparks has uh, been tremendous for one thaggy today. He's really controlled uh, that ruck part of the ground. Shannon Lang's kick to Will Leslie. They found a target. Leslie just rolls back and just holds onto it. Thanks very much for joining us on Sunday afternoon. If you've been tuning into this game, it hasn't reached great heights. Can we get something late? Is there a Zambrero goal that they can tend to coming up? Jack Johnson gave it across to Butcher, although Butcher lost it. Gilmore now gives it to the run there of Bates, and Bates will thump it out and kick it out of bounds on the full. 
And we're going to do it again. Scud quickly around the grounds. Thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture, Gippsland, the Mid-Gippsland Football League. It's the uh, final there now. It's all done and it's all over for Newborough for 2024. Foster, 8 6 54, defeated Newborough, 4 13 37. Hutchins' lateral kick was dangerous. Campbell couldn't complete the mark. Hayes works hard. They dive in on top and the umpire will ball it up. Sunday afternoon footy from Bansdale City Oval Elimination. Final of the Alinta Energy Gippsland League. It is currently one thaggy leading by 30 points. Sale, most likely they're pretty much their season is done. They'll uh, go home and reassess where they're at. Sparks again will get another touch from here. The handball forward. And they're not going anywhere. We'll ball it up. Some advice for any listeners out there. If you want to buy shares in Dan Murphy's, <laughs> I'd be doing it now because Scotty Berry Tree is going to be visiting you very shortly in Bansdale. <laughs> is that uh, Scotty Berry Tree's brother? Yes. Yeah. I call him Berry Tree. <laughs> Just don't call me late for dinner. Mark taken across the half back line here. And it's by Knowles again. So at half back flank, far side of the ground, wash, rinse, repeat. One Thaggy with the footy. Long kick down the line. Hopefully Blair can get those hops up again and get in the air and take a nice clunk and give us something to get excited about. Wins it at ground level instead to Sparks. They go backwards via the hands. Turned it over to Sale here, though. Lang gets a handball limit. It's at the feet of his teammate. They go back in and pick it up. One Faggy have moved at the length of the goal, the centre square. Forward flank, far side of the ground. Another car load goes out. Yep. McGinnis wins the tap down. And Sale now hack the ball up to the half-forward line. It's over your heads, boys. Run the other way. And they do, but the boundary line wins the conversation yet again. And we'll ball this one in about 60 around from the sale goal. We've gone 16 minutes here in the last quarter. It's one faggy, 5-12-42. Sale 1-6-12. So we'll ball this one in, 60 around. Egg Melissi Smith at the clearance. Let's see if he can get his hands on the footy and do something exciting. He's been brilliant when he's had ball in hand. Just probably hasn't happened quite enough for sale's liking. McGuinness takes it out of the air. Beautiful play by him. Kicks it into the forward 50. Gets past Hennis. Gets past everyone out the back. And trickles over the boundary line for a throw in. Just to update you all from the around the grounds from earlier on in uh, netball. We'll go right through them. Uh, the Maui side defeated Sale in the 13 and unders. Maui also won in the 15 and under. Sale winning the 17 and under. And one thaggy upset Lee and Gather by a goal in C grade. And then it was Terrelgan knocking off one thaggy in B grade. And Bansdale defeated Terrelgan in A grade. The match of the day there, 56 to 38. We've had a stoppage boundary throw and there's going to be a free kick. It's going to be paid sales way here. And it's going to Jack Johnson. I reckon the umpires just said, I've had enough. Of I've had enough. Let's yeah. pay a free kick and, and get the ball back to the middle. And I don't blame him um, because you can hear it in the our tone of our voice. Uh, as we've nearly checked out as well. But we'll bring things home. 17 minutes of the final quarter. Jack Johnson, tough angle to kick a goal from here. Got to start it to the right, inside the right, you think. He's a good kick, right goal post. Works its way back. Jack Johnson puts it through. He's a class player. We love talking to him pre-game. We love watching him play. He's an absolute star of our competition, and he gets a Zambrero goal at a contender in the final quarter. He definitely is, Scott, and uh, you hit the nail right on the head then too. And... Uh it was a beautiful kick of goal there as well. Well, we've got a magpie, a real sort, in the middle, inside 50. They've thrown another number back here, Sale. <laughs> so look out. They are throwing numbers back now forward, Scotty. So head we've got more magpies on the ground. The umpire might do a head count. Head count make things interesting. Now, I was just thinking, though, Box, one out of the middle and straight through the big sticks here for Sale. Lloyd Christmas comes into play. 24-point <laughs> oh. lead to one day. 18-minute mark the final quarter. Harvey Norman's computers scoreboard, 5 12 42 to 2 6 18. And here we go. It's going to be Johnny McGuinness that gets us underway. No, it's oh. not. It's Bray. Oh. Ball goes the other way. Sale still a chance at ground level. Not on my watch, says Blair. Blair goes in. Can't take the ball cleanly. It's a hot footy to be won. There's now our man Walker throwing his weight around. They're still having to take the boys. No, he's done his shoulder. No, he's got to take the finger. Don't let me look at that or those sandwiches will come back up. <laughs> i tell you what, not in here. I think Sarah, Sarah actually just had a little belief there, I reckon. Oh, yeah. She's a beauty. So up she goes. McGuinness gets a tap down. Oh. Can't get it clear. Oh, you blokes are sick. There's nothing wrong with you when you want to look at that. I had a bit of a look. <laughs> it's not bad. When fingers aren't going north and south, I'm not interested. It's the, it's the ring finger on the wedding hand as well. So if he's married, um, he won't be putting the wedding ring back on. It's still out oh, too, by the way. And Hennis is coming off too now. He's done something in that pack. Be his uh, thumb might have dislocated. Oh, God. No, here we go. <laughs> so Bray wins the tap down. 
Sailor ground level win the footy though through Holmes. He punches a handball forward to Lang. Beaten by the footy though was Blair. Bottom alone has been sucked in for the free kick down the field. Well played by Jared Blair. So it's a pointy, the pointing finger of Cody Hennis as well. Lost gone his nail. The other way. Yeah, lost his nail. Oh. Oh, I can feel the sting. <laughs> Aiden Lindsay's been outstanding since quarter time. He gets another kick here. Goes back to Jared Blair, who marks in the half forward flank. He's got a short one on. Mark taken out here, about 60 around from goal. No guessing uh, who it is. Well, I'm sick of saying his name. So Sparks plays on, kicks to within about 35 a goal. McKinnis out the back, drops a chesty on the second grab. Ball's nudged towards the boundary line, but kept alive temporarily, and now it goes out of bounds for a throw in about 20 around from the power goal. Just to give you a quick little update there in the North Gippsland Football League. It's Woodside easy at the moment. 11 10 76 to Hayfield 2 5 17. Thanks very much to our good friends at Harvey Norman Furniture for those scores throughout the afternoon. McGuinness with a big tap down. Jack Blair was there, socking it off the ground. Lux of Fortune not quite there this afternoon as Campbell tried to barrel and <laughs> went off the side of his boot. And it went sideways. Thomas Glenn uh, have to see it go over for a boundary throw in. Right in front of the pop-up bar here at the Bairnsdale City Oval. And the Bairnsdale supporters will be happy with the A-grade victory this afternoon. Ball comes back into the field of play. Oh, it ricocheted off Jack, uh, Jared Blair's knee and went over for another boundary Incredible throw. Incredible story there for Bairnsdale too. They only snuck into the yep. top five uh, at the last game as well. Right. So... Uh, to win their first final uh, is a great effort by them. Only winning a couple of games throughout uh, last season. Didn't yep. have a B-grade team either last year, so great effort. Back here, Jack Blair fights hard. Egg Millicy Smith down at ground level. McMillan comes in and umpire says, let's do it again. 21 minutes gone in the final quarter on your Sunday afternoon. It's a 24-point margin. One Faggy are holding on at the moment. McGinnis gets the tap down. Sale City go forward by foot. No one able to take the ball at ground level. The boundary line will win. And in terms of the boundary line winning, it's the boundary line this side, probably about eight. The boundary line the other side, probably 908. Cody Walker's all good. Back on. He's right to go, mate. His finger's back. Oh, he's high five the bloke on the way on the ground, so you wouldn't have thought you'd give that a miss. But <laughs> nonetheless, the ball's tossed back in. Bray in the front spot brings it down towards Blair. Blair's probably held without it. The umpire says play on, so play on they do. Brother of goes in and he's tackled over the boundary line and we'll toss this one in. Centre wing, slight advantage territory-wise to Wonthaggy Power. Massive advantage scoreboard-wise where they lead 42 to 18, 22 minutes played in the last quarter. Both Ruckman shielding the sun from their eyes. Bray gets it off his head down towards Blair. Blair Jarrett hacks it into the forward 50, looks for McInnes. Ball sits on its end. No one able to take it initially. McInnes now. It's a foot race. Sailor got numbers back there. McInnes oh. head over the footy. Surely taken high. Umpire says play on if you like. Play on they do. And now the umpire says I'll ball it up. Surely that was high contact. Definitely was too, Scotty. And uh, you got to protect the play with the head over the ball. And the umpire definitely didn't do that in that situation. Front spot. McInnes just grabs it out of the ruck. Gets ball to boot. Bouncing away from the goals. And will find a boundary throw in on the point of the point post. And this is where they might be able to extract another goal towards the city end of the ground. They lead by 24 points to the power. Ball comes back into the field of play. McGuinness shoves his ruckman out, taps it his direction. Jack Blair was there. Egg Melissi Smith picks it up and then tackled. And another ball up 40 metres out. I'm off to Harvey Norman tomorrow too, Scott. So I'll be looking after our fantastic sponsors of the 100-inch uh, TV I'm after. 100-inch. There you go. That's where you get to pay the big bucks. Correct. Big tump out. Tap out for the Magpies. Will Leslie runs onto it. Inside out, upside down. Drop punt will go end on end. Travel 100 metres and go out of bounds on the far side of the ground. And Noel says, is that deliberate? <laughs> I want a deliberate. Wow. Noel. At which is a fair question to ask. Oh. It did travel... 80 to 100 metres. Yeah, Scott, I'm not going to Harvey Norman. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That's right. I'm not going. No, the, the wife has said, said no. no. Well, that's because you lost it all gambling yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's... No, I didn't. Ball comes back in. Bray gets it down. Bray good at ground level again, but he's wrapped up by McGuinness. And there'll be a ball up on the half-forward flank here for sale. Probably need a late goal to add just a little bit of respectability to the scoreboard, but it's 42 plays 18, nearly 24 gone. Sale so win the stoppage. Ball comes forward. One out the back there, though, by Connor McMillan. He hacks the ball forward. Can't get any traction on the clearance, though. We'll have another stoppage. Put him alone. Trots on in. And he'll toss this one up. 
Bray gets his tap on it. Sale winning the ground level. Ball gets in there forward 50. Blair goes back there with McMillan. Chug back there also for one thaggy. Happy to see this one over the boundary line. So it's 24 and a half played. It's 5 12 42. Sale 2 6 18. A big moment this afternoon. All thanks to our sponsor at Metricon Homes. Start building in just 16 weeks. Contact Metricon today. Love where you live. So the ball gets tossed back into play again. Brad Descent doing the ruck work now, but he can't get the clearance. Wash, rinse, repeats. We're going to start thinking about our Gippsland Suzuki player of the day as well, and of course our Zambrero goal of the day. It looks Hasn't like the been decision's already been made. Might have been. It's a democratic uh, panel up here, Scudman. Let's work like a team and do it my way. Ball yes. toss back in. <laughs> Descent in front gets the ball out the back. He's been awesome today, Lang. Certainly not his fault. He saw it out winning. Speaking of awesome, yeah. Sparks gets his hand on it. I'm pretty sure his name's written down somewhere. And a free kick. And he'll take the free kick for possession number. How many? Have you got that on the cuff? Um, 46. Really? No, uh, to get very close. Uh, 5, 8, 19, 11, <laughs> <Yeah>. 40, 45. <laughs> Live on Pretty radio, close. Paul Carter's head <laughs> ticking over. <laughs> As well, we close. And he got 40. all his hands and fingers out at the same time. Sorry, as well. I was out by one. To be he's fair, got 45. he's got 45. He's about to kick this. How many is that? He's 45. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. I thought you were going to be spotting the money. You deserve one after this, Mal. So Sparks kicks it down towards the wing area. McGuinness is there in the front spot. That was Cooper McGuinness. McLaren kicks around the body and puts it. No, no, not, not over in the Mitchell. And it's... Oh, it's in the tree. In the tree. We're all right. It's in the tree. Get the footy out. Emergency up. Hurry up. Unbelievable. 26 minutes have gone. We've lost two footies on the far side today. And now the third one's stuck in a tree. And the trainer's going to climb it. No. No, we're going to use the spare one who's behind gonna, the goals. Who's going to take the kick, Scott? Um, it is going to be Sparks, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'll We've got you. two footies out there. Well, Sparks has had his own footy all day anyway. Kick it both. <laughs> he took it out of his jumper. So there you go. So Sparks has it. And he's going to have his 46th touch. I'll give you the tip. We might have a chat to him after the game. Kicks to the wing. Big mark in front. And if so, Hudson Holmes has been very good for the Magpies. He's a bit hurt there. He handballs cross to Egmelesi Smith. Left foot kick goes high to top of the 50. Knowles will have the sit and can't complete the mark. His second effort was good, though. Gave it to Sparks again. Touch number 47. Scrub one. Egmelesi Smith picks it up. Jeez, love the way he goes about it. Left foot kick. Johnson takes a mark 49 metres out. This can go through. He'll run around and right on 50. No, got underneath it. Going to go to the top of the square. Where's the big targets? Free kick. It's going to go Leslie's way. Advantage will be paid. Campbell runs onto it, puts it through for the Magpies. And at the 27 and a half minute mark, the Magpies have got two in a row. Well, it's a consolation goal there for Sale, really, at the uh, back end of this last quarter as well. But, uh, yep, the ball comes inside 50 really quick. We make a contest to kick a goal. This game of footy is not that hard. It's play between your ears more times than ever. But anyway, it's been one thaggy's afternoon so far. And it's an 18-point difference at the 27-minute mark of the final quarter with one thaggy 5-12-42, leading sale at 3-6-24. I reckon there's about two minutes to go, I reckon. Four. Four. Yeah, got it wrong. We're very close to the timekeepers here and appreciate their efforts throughout the afternoon. Keeping us up Except to date with how long's to go. Box slagging off their kids. Yeah, that's right. That's Egg okay. Smith says, get out of the way, Embrace says, not on my watch. Ball spills free. Now they go through forward through Lang. He kicks the ball into the forward 50 and pushing back with guts. He's been good. Good G and D there by Chug. Taking mark number eight. And he goes far side. He goes far side, pushing back there well was Egg Molesi Smith, but he can't win the contest. I just want to see the ball in the hands of Sparks a couple more times and see him raise the bat for 50. Alrighty, what's he on? 48. Uh, yep. Uh, Let's have a look. Don't count again, Paul. <laughs> 40, 47. 47, all right. Let's see if we can get him over these. We ran this contest somewhere. Surprisingly, he's got a little bit of space. Scotty, see if you can get him a touch. So it's Bray versus McGinnis. Bray wins a tap down ball on ground level. Sparks, well, we can't count that because he tapped it on the ground, but he did get his hands on it. But Sale win at the ground level and kick the ball up towards centre half forward. Charging out at it with the big Dukes up was Johnson couldn't complete the mark. Does win the free kick. Gets around one, gets around two, gets onto that right leg, kicks into a little bit of space. Space is very quickly filled, though, by Hunter Tiziani. He gets a handball off there to Gilmore. Uh, and Thomas McMillan. Little T-Mac will take a kick. And a tiny little uh -oh. kick it is to a tiny little bloke. Sparks! 48. Marks, kicks, 
And of course, he finds a target in Shannon Bray, two and one. They might be one and two the other way on the vote card. And they come in board here and find Patterson. So Patterson, about 80 from goal, got McInnes in front of him. He ignores that and goes wider. Mark taken out by Bates. Bates about 75 from home. Lead comes at him from Lindsay. Lead comes at him from Lindsay. Getting across there with some really good defensive work was Freeman. And he sees the ball over the boundary line. No, it stays just in. But we'll have a forward 50 stoppage. Well, you know what that means. Sparks will be on the move. 29 and three quarter minutes, final quarter. Well, thanks to Harvey Norman Computers. Ball up, tapped down by Bray. Igmalesi Smith with a little kick where Leslie can't complete the mark. Here's Blair. Picks it up through his legs in the end. Spins around, top of the 50. Little chip kick. Does he find the target? He does. How good is the coach, Jared Blair? The target's Patterson. He might be too far out the score, though. Has the breeze dropped yeah, I think a fraction? dropped a little bit, I reckon. It might have just dropped. So this could be a chance for Patterson. He's a good size, a thumping kick. Early on in the game, I would have said no. But this is a chance to start this on the left goalpost. I still think it drops short. He'll take all the time in the world because his side leads by 18 points. He's got a kick at 45. Tough condition still. He plays on. Gets around the man on the mark. Now he's a chance and kicks it. No, he doesn't come back. It actually doesn't even make the distance. Sale want to rush it through, and they do just that. Minus score, Paul Carter. 19-point lead to Sale, 5-13-43. Sale, 3-6-24. Harvey Norman Computers, 31 minutes played. Final quarter. Walker does the kicking in. Please go barrel down the guts. And he goes <laughs> barrel down the guts! <laughs> Look at and that. he gets it north of the equator. <laughs> it's gone all the way to centre back, <laughs> where Schultz says, I know nothing, but I know how to play footy. <laughs> Holy moly! Gets the footy and finds a teammate on the far wing. We've been hanging for that all day. And it was Sparks who gets his hands on the footy for touch number 49. We've got one to go. Power with ball in hand. They come back through the middle of the ground. Give it to Sparks. Stoppage. No, Perillo watches on, waves his arms. Play on, they say. So play on, they do. And now Pete Perillo goes go. in there and balls it up. What a barrel, though. <laughs> it got to centre half forward. Two to go. Two to go. Sparks is surely going to get 50. He's around the stoppage. Bray goes up, taps it down. Sparks is off the back of it. He hasn't got it yet. Quick yep. handball, McLaren. Yep. Oh. No, that was Pat, uh, Bates. Tap down. Bray's there. Sparks has got space. Give him the handball, Bray. No. Sparks becomes the shepherd. Bray kicks it to McGinnis. And the power of Fuller running in the final quarter. McGinnis has taken a mark directly in front, 20 metres out. What was Bray thinking then? Just give it to the runner, Sparks. Give it to him. He probably would have kicked the goal. The way he's going this afternoon, Sparks could probably kick it from that He pocket. would have kicked the goal, run through to the news agents, bought a scratch here, won a car. <laughs> 32 minutes gone. We've got a minute and a half to go. Cooper McGuinness will have a shot on goal. The game's all done. We're on Sparks' watch for 50. We're finding some sort of excitement in this final quarter. McInnes into the breeze. Hope, he, kick, hope he kicks a point and Walker kicks in again. Yeah, that would be exciting to see. Let's have a look at McGuinness. A slow approach. Comes in. He's a right footer. Starts it. That's a good kick. That's a goal. Yes, it just... Get, well, it got through and then nearly come back. It's a goal to Coop and Beginner, so, and this power side, they're going to be dangerous in the coming weeks. Was that a true drop punt, Scotty? I think he kicked a banana from the front. It was a banana in front. in front. So he's done the banana. He's, did, he's done what we spoke about. No, no. It was an inside-out no. banana. No, it wasn't. It was a drop punt. You sure? Come on. The way it swung through those goals, it looked like a banana. But anyway, we'll leave it over to Paul. Get the scores done. Let's get this 50 and let's get out of here. 25-point lead. 33 minutes played in the final quarter. 136-13 for sale 3-6. Back in the middle we go. Bray versus McGuinness like it's been most of the day. Bray wins a tap down. Can't get it clear. Hamill it forward. He does, and he kicks it forward instead. No sense of fear to some of these blokes. Ball on ground. <laughs> no one can win at the ground level initially. Cracking in there double times. Tiziani. Umpire Perillo says, I've seen enough. I'll toss it up. So he trots on over far side of the ground. Right on the edge of the centre square, he'll toss this one up. McGuinness gets a tap down. It goes backwards to go forward. McGuinness goes back in to do the work at ground level. Picks it up. He's been outstanding today, the young fella in the ruck. He has... We'll come in and toss this one up again. He gets up over the back. Oh, no, that's Bates. Bates gets a little <laughs> kick forward. And he turns it over. Mark taken across half back here by Sale. 
Bray's hurt in the middle of the ground. I'll keep an eye on that one. And Campbell with the kick up to half forward. Looks for the coach. Gets out the back of the contest. This will well, be a contest, this one, if they hit each other. Now, nah, big time as Jacob comes Uh-oh, first. There it through. is. There it is. And he finds Sparks. And celebrate the 50. Sparks <laughs> misses the target with his first <laughs> first time today with kick number 50. Oh, oh, the siren. There it is. One thaggy power progress into a first semi final next week against the Maroons. And what a game that is going to be. The Trailgan staff, no doubt, watching on this game. The power was super. Clinical this afternoon. 6 13 49 Wonthaggy have defeated the Magpies 3 6 24. It's a 25 point margin in the end. We're going to go to a break, come back and have a chat to. Oh, don't worry about that. It'll be Ryan Sparks, who will be our player of the day. We're going to wrap things up. All the key stats and, of course, everything you need to know about next week's big game. You are listening to Gippsland Live right here on TRFM across Gippsland, the Valley. And it's thanks to Harvey Norman, Electrical Gippsland. It's time for this week's Gippsland League Top 5. Let's go. Kicking us off at number one, Derek Egmolesi smith here from Sale. He had to think quick. He was front and centre, got it over his head, and a great goal. Number two, this one's an absolute peach. Cade Reuters here from Terralgan. This is tough. He's right on the boundary line. How does he do that? That is one of the best you'll see. Goal of the day, winner. You are not a contender, it's the winner. You are kidding me, Timmy. That is one of the best we have seen all year. From... Number three, it's Blair Roscoe here from Terralgan. Beautiful little pick up this, but even better evading his opponent. Then he just goes bang, lines it up, puts it home. Oh, the youngsters put it through. Good. How good is this great game of AFL? This is unreal. And he's on the wrong side there too for a left footer. That could have gone anywhere. Number four here, Jared Stewart here on the throw in from Leon Gather. He just takes off. He says, catch me if you can, I'm putting it through. Number five, it's Liam Masters here from Moe. He just gets the hand pass right on the paint of 50, bangs it home. 